Uh, good afternoon and welcome to the live proceedings of the National Assembly on this afternoon of Wednesday. The day is the 15th of March, the year is 2023. A broadcast made possible through the collaboration between the Kenya Broadcasting Corporation and the Parliamentary Broadcasting Unit. This is the second sitting of the National Assembly today, owing to the fact that uh, the House began its sittings 9.30 in the morning, according to uh, the orders as well as the rules of the National Assembly under the 13th Parliament. Uh, let's now have a look at the order paper this afternoon on what members of Parliament uh, will be, so to speak, commencing business on. And uh, just to highlight some of them is uh, the report on the consideration of the 2023 medium-term debt management strategy. This is a motion by the chairperson public debt and matters privatization committee, privatization committee rather, who happens to be the member for Mbalambala, Honorable Abdi Shurie. So the House adopts the report of the debt, public debt and privatization committee on its consideration of the 2023 medium-term debt management strategy. And this particular report was laid on the table of the House on Thursday, the date being 9th of March, year 2023, and passed on to the provisions of sections number 15, subsection 4 of the Public Finance Management Act number 2012, as well as standing orders number 232A, subsection 7 and 8. The House approves the 2023 medium-term debt management strategy and also makes the policy and financial resolutions contained in the schedule in the order paper. This particular debate has been concluded and what is remaining is for the question to be put. Another motion for consideration by members of the National Assembly is a report on the consideration of the draft cell salaries and remuneration commission remuneration as well as benefits of state and other public officers, this being under regulations 2022. And this is a report by the chairperson, Departmental Committee on Matters Delegated Legislation, that the House adopts a report of the Committee on Delegated Legislation on its consideration of the draft salaries and remuneration commission and remuneration and benefits of state as well as other public officers regulations number 2022. And this particular report was laid on the table of the House on 9th March 2023 and passed on to the provisions of standing orders number 26 subsection 2 of the Salaries and Remuneration Commission Act of 2011 rejects the draft salaries and remuneration commission regulations of the year 2022. Uh, about two hours is remaining on this particular motion and members of the National Assembly will be making their input in regards to the proposals in this particular report. Another motion given priority in the order of business this afternoon is a consideration of the nominee for the appointment as members of the National Climate Change Council. And this particular motion by the Chairperson Departmental Committee on Matters Environment, Forestry and Mining, uh, the committee seeks to have the National Assembly approve the appointment of members of the National Climate Change Council. And this particular members are Ms. Emily Mwende Waita, Mr. John Kioli Kalua, and uh, Professor George Odera Outa. And uh, the report by the committee also seeks to have the House reject uh, the appointment of Ms. Umra Omar as the member of the National Climate Change Council. The member for Moya, Honorable Mary Maingi, will be asking questions to the Cabinet Secretary of Agriculture and Matters Livestock to provide details on the status of the implementation as well as specify the timelines within which the Ministry intends to revive Moya cotton ginery following legalization of the commercial cultivation of the genetically modified pest resistant cotton variety in 2019 after trials at the Kenya Agricultural and Livestock Organization Caro Center in Moya. This question will be replied for the Departmental Committee on Matters, Agriculture and Livestock. The Speaker of the National Assembly, Honorable Moses Wetangula, is in the chamber this afternoon. 
uh, now hand over so you can follow up on the live broadcast of the National Assembly. Enjoy your viewing and good afternoon. Mwishimiwa na tuombe, ewe mwenyezi mungu, ambaye kwa hekima na wema wako umetewa nyazi basa viongozi na mabunge, kwa ustawa wa jamii na utawala wa haki wa nadamu. Takusi utasame kwa nema nyingi sisi watumishi wako, ambao meridhika kutuita ili tutatueze shukuli muhimu za ijamuri yetu. Tuwa kuomba utarumshie baraka zako sisi tulio kutonika hapa, na utujalie tuyatende na kufikire mambo yote, yatakayo fikishwa mbele yetu kwa njia ya haki na uaminifu ili utukufu na sifa zako ziendelezwe na ili kustawisha amani ufanisi na heri ya njia yetu na wale ambao haja zao wamezikabidhi mikononi mwetu amen Majority and minority leaders. In the old days, when the division bell rang, you would see the whips racing out to go and look for members. Eh? <laughs> now we have quorum to transact business. <laughs> I didn't say anybody race out, though. Uh, clerk. Order number one, administration of oath. Order number two, communication from the chair. <coughs> Order number three, messages. Honorable members, I wish to convey a message from the president on nomination of a person for appointment as a member of the National Gender and Equality Commission. 
Honorable members, pursuant to the provision of standing order number 42, I wish to convey the following message from His Excellency the President regarding the nomination of a person for appointment as a member of the National Gender and Equity Commission. In the message, Honorable Members, His Excellency the President conveys that in exercise of powers conferred on him by Article 252B of the Constitution and Section 11.6 of the National Gender and Equity Equality Commission Act 2012, as read together, the Section 3 and 5 of the Public Appointments Parliamentary Approval Act, Act Number 33 of 2011, he has nominated Dr. Margaret Karungaru for appointment as a member of the National Gender and Equality Commission. The President now seeks the approval of the nominee by this House. Honorable Member Standing Order 45 provides that upon receipt of notification of a nomination for appointment, such a nomination shall stand committed to the relevant departmental committee for consideration. In this regard, I hereby refer the message from His Excellency the President, together with the CV, the report of the Public Service Commission, and other testimonials of the nominee to the Departmental Committee on Labor for consideration. Honorable Members, it's important to note that Section 8 of the Public Appointments Parliamentary Approval Act 2012 provides that the committee to which such nomination is referred, notably Section 11.6 of the National Gender and Equality Commission Act 2012, provides for a lesser period being 21 days. In this regard, the committee should undertake approval hearings and submit its report within 21 days as provided for in the National Gender and Equality Commission Act. The law, however, allows for an extension of this period should need arise. In view of the, of the foregoing honorable members, the committee is expected to immediately commence the approval, the approval process, notify the nominee and the general public of the time and place for holding the approval hearing. Thereafter, upon conclusion of the hearing, table its report on or before Wednesday, 5th April 2023, to enable the House to consider the matter within the statutory timelines. I thank you. Order number four, petitions. Order number five, papers. Majority Leader. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I beg to lay the following papers on the table of the House today, Wednesday, March 15, 2023, the afternoon sitting. One report of the Auditor General and financial statements in respect of the following institutions and the year ended for the year ended 30th June 2018 and the certificates therein. Institute of Human Resource Management and Masaimara Technical and Vocational College. Two, reports of the Auditor General and financial statements in respect of the following institutions for the year ended 30th June 2019 and the certificates therein. Runyanja's Technical and Vocational College and the Institute of Human Resource Management. Three, reports of the Auditor General and the financial state statements in respect of the following institutions for the year ended 30th June 2021 and the certificates therein. Tana Waterworks Development Agency, Laikipia University, Kenya Industrial and Development Institute, Bandari Maritime Academy, Southeastern Kenya University, Machakos University, IDB Capital Limited, Kenya Nuclear Regulatory Authority, Samburu Water and Sanitation Company Limited, and the University of Nairobi Enterprises and Services Limited. Four reports of the Auditor General and the financial statements in respect of the following institutions for the year ended 30th June 2022 and the certificates therein. Kisi Water Supply and Sanitation Project, ORI 011-KE-21. B, Trilateral Development Corporation in Kenya, Water and Sanitation Sector Project, credit number BMZ 201-365-352, Lake Victoria South Waterworks Development Agency. C, Kenya Livestock Commercialization Project Loan number 2-0-0-3-5-6-5 and 2-0-0-3-5-6-6, State Department for Livestock. 
D, microfinance sector support credit project, credit number CKE 30401E and CKE 601001E, the National Treasury. E, Nairobi Sanitation Output Based Aid, OBA projects, IDA grant number TF014251 and number TF0A5607, Nairobi City Water and Sewerage Company Limited. F, Financing Locally Led Climate Action Program, credit number IDA690, TF B6810-KE, P173065, and G, Financial Sector Support Project, IDA credit number 5627-KE, the National Treasury. H, Support to Water and Sanitation Services in Periurban Area, law number BMZ2013, dot six five four three dot six are the waterworks development agency i nairobi rivers basin rehabilitation and restoration program sewerage Impro improvement project phase two afdb loan number two zero 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 two quadruple zero three four zero seven and adf loan number two one double zero one five double zero four zero five five zero are the waterworks development agency i nairobi water Distribution Network Projects, Credit BMZ number 2020.82.527, so KV26833 at the Waterworks Development Agency. And lastly, the Northern Collector Phase 1, Additional Rehabilitation and Development of the Network at the Waterworks Development Agency. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. The Honorable Beatrice Elachi, Select Committee on the National Government Constituency Development Fund. I don't see on the way any member of that committee just to lay the report on the table. Majority, in the interest of time, you can do that for them. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Although I think, Honorable Speaker, it's important that we mention to the chairs of committees, at least at 2.30, all chairs and vice chairs of committees should be in the House. And uh, uh, Honorable Speaker, it is only out they of respect for the office of the here Speaker. Five minutes to 2.30. Mr. Yes. Speaker should find them in the House. Mr. Speaker cannot be sitting waiting for chairs and vice chairs of committees, or, or even members. Yes. The House rises at 2.30. So let, let notice be served to all our chairs, Honorable Speaker, so that those who are not available can also relinquish their positions to those who are, have time to commit to the House. Before you lay the document, Honorable Andai, what is it? Mr. Speaker, I just want to uh, agree with the Honorable Echungwa, the leader majority, on this matter of the attendance of House sittings by chairs and vice chairs of of various House committees. Mr. Speaker, it's, it's always been a tradition in this House, at least since the advent of the new Constitution, that chairpersons and vice chairpersons of committees must be physically present in the chamber when the House or, 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 or commences its sitting. Mr. Speaker, it is now taking a, a, new, a, new, a new direction, this idea of committees being left to if I may say, fend for themselves. Because the committee members must, can only get the ration from their chairs. Yes. And, and uh, if a chair is not prepared to lead his committee or her committee, then they should say so and give room for others. Okay? Otherwise, this idea of abdicating responsibility uh, 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 every now and then is going to leave a very, very uh, bad precedent in this house, in the chair. I want you to put your foot down, Mr. Speaker. And I mean all chairs, including those who chair uh, oversight committees, audit committees, who are from my side of the coalition. They have to be here. They have got no excuse. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. To all chairs, the French say noblesse oblige. Nobility carries obligations. When you are given a responsibility, it has attendant obligations. In fact, majority and minority leaders, if the chairman of committees were responsive to time of the House, 
we would never be sitting here to ring the bell for quorum because they alone constitute more than enough uh, members or that will constitute quorum. So proceed, and uh, I would uh, advise you to crack your whip where necessary. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Order. <laughs> Order. I hear, I hear, Honorable Speaker. Go Honorable on, Speaker, uh, we, 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 shall, we shall indulge our chairs, but today being the last time, we are indulging them. Honorable Speaker, even myself, I do get late, and because we also have other responsibilities for our constituencies. For instance, this morning, I was not in the House, but I made sure even if my deputy was not here or the chief whip, at least I asked a chair of another community, Honorable Chepkonga, to lay papers on my behalf, since I was going to give bursaries to the people of Kinoward who have told me to pass their greetings to the House and say that they are firmly behind this government and they shall not be intimidated by anybody. Honorable Speaker, I beg to lay the following papers on the table of the House. Today, Wednesday, March 15, 2023, on behalf of the Chair of the National Government Constituency Development Fund, report of the Select Committee on National Government Constituency Development Fund on the list of nominees to the National Government Constituency Development Fund committees, for three constituencies. Thank, Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Next order. Yes, uh, Honorable. Honorable Cameron, what is out of order? Can you give Honorable Cameron the mic? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I thought, Mr. Speaker, it is in order when you are accused, you be given chances to defend yourself. Being the chair and vice chair, it is good to be heard because we have been present, Mr. Speaker, and nationally we shall look like we are not been present. We have been present, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Cameron, we know you are present. The roll call doesn't have to be physical every time you enter the chamber your presence is automatically recorded and the roll call is with these clerks. So we know who is here and who isn't here. Notice of motion, uh, order number six. Order number six, notices of motion. Majority, you'll have to go the whole hog. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Again, on behalf of the chair, of the Select Committee on National Government Constituencies Development Fund, I beg to give notice of the following motion, that this House adopts the report of the National Government Constituency Development Fund on three constituency committees laid on the table of the House on Wednesday, March 15, 2023, pursuant to the provisions of Section 43, Subsection 4 of the National Government Constituency Development Fund Act 2015, and paragraphs 5, 2, and 10 of the National Government Constituencies Development Fund Regulations of 2016, approves the list of nominees for appointment to the following three constituency committees of the National Government Constituency Development Fund. One, Garissa Constituency, and I see the member for Garissa is here. Mbere North Constituency. Narok East Constituency, I see the member for Narok East is here. Honorable Speaker, again, it is customary for this house that if a member whose list of nominees is being approved by the House he is not in the House, that matter stands dropped. Because we cannot pass your list and you, have, you are not in, present in the House yourself. So notice, notice be served to the member from Bere North, who is not in the House now, that at the time we get to this motion, should he not be in the House, then his list will stand dropped. Thank you. Honorable Member Mark, Mark Mwenje. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. I beg, beg to give notice of the following motion, that aware that lack of access to ownership of productive assets, in particular to land, is one of the very serious sources of economic and social insecurity for Kenyans, further aware that many communities, particularly in rural areas, and informal settlements in urban areas depend on land 
for their production and livelihood and therefore landlessness affects the ability to secure basic needs such as food, shelter, and clothing. Concerned that for urban low-income dwellers, the only way of accessing land to put up their dwellings has been taken up resident, has been, sorry, has been to take up residence on land that is unfit for human habitation, aware that the Bill of Rights in Chapter 4 of the Constitution guarantees every citizen the right to adequate housing and reasonable standards of sanitation, noting that there are many squatters who have settled on land that belongs to either absentee landlords, unadjudicated land, public land, or community land for long periods of times, with some disputed while others undisputed, concerned that the issue of land settlement in many urban areas, particularly in the informal settlements, has remained unresolved, um, with numerous persons remaining squatters, Further aware that Section 7 of the Limitation of Actions Act 2010 provides for the right to claim for settlement on certain land after the prescribed period, while Section 134 of the Land Act 2012 empowers the national government to implement settlement programs and provide for process for doing so, recognizing the need for the Ministry of Lands to hasten the process of identifying parcels occupied by squatters where there are no disputes from any party, this House resolves that the government develops and implements a policy for regularization of the settlement of squatters within a period of two years in accordance with the provisions of Part 9 of the Land Act 2012 to address the challenges faced by squatters across the, can the country. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Mwenja. Before I go to the next order, Honorable Members, I wish to acknowledge the presence in the Speaker's ga gallery, four staff members from Makueni County Assembly. You may stand to be acknowledged. You are welcome to the House of Parliament. In the public gallery, I wish to acknowledge the presence of the Star Sheikh Academy from Mavoko Machakos. On your behalf and on my own behalf, I welcome our visitors to the House of Parliament. And next order. Order number seven, questions and statements. Questions, we start with a question by Honorable Mary Maingi, MP. Member for Mwea. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this opportunity to ask my first question in this August House. Yes, uh, Kamket, what's out of order? Give uh, Kamket. Uh. Mr. Speaker, we recently passed uh, the amendments of standing orders. When are we likely to get the uh, CSS to come and answer these questions? Honorable Kamuket, if you are past, then you should have known the effective date. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, the motion had an effective date, which is uh, later this month. We forgive you for not knowing, but uh, you are presumed to know everything you pass here. Honorable member, Proceed to ask your question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Speaker, pursuant to provisions of studying order number 42A5, I rise to ask the following question to the Cabinet Secretary for Agriculture and Livestock Department. One, could the Cabinet Secretary provide details of the status of implementation and specify with timelines within which the minister intends to revive Moya cotton ginery following legalization of commercial cultivation of genetically modified pest resistant Bt cotton variety in 2019 after trials at Kenya Agricultural and Livestock Research Organization, CARO, center in Moya. Two, what steps has the minister taken 
to ensure that when the generator begins active production, locals of Moya constituency will directly benefit in terms of employment, opportunities, and corporate social responsibility initiatives. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Member, Mayor Maingi. Next, question 040, Member for Kibwezi East, Honorable Jess Kambalo. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, for the opportunity and pass one to the provisions of standing order number 42R5. The following, I mean, the, I rise to ask uh, the following question to question number 40 of 2023 to the Cabinet Secretary for Energy and Petroleum. Number one, can the Cabinet Secretary provide details of the number of public utilities, including primary and secondary schools in Kibwezi's constituency that are not connected to the electricity and the steps being undertaken to connect them to the national grid? Honorable Speaker, number two, to outline the measures that the Ministry has put in place to either service or replace faulty and obsolete solar PV systems that were installed to supply uninterrupted power to various public institutions in Kibwezi's constituency, and particularly primary schools, where power is critical for the implementing um, of the digital learning program. Number three, Honorable Speaker, that the Cardinal Secretary provides a status report on electrification projects for other areas in Kibwezi's constituency that are not connected to electricity and the plans being undertaken to ensure that the areas get connected to the national grid. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Jessica. Question 044, the member for Teso North, Oku Kaunya. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise to ask question number 044 to the Cabinet Secretary for Education. Could the Cabinet Secretary, one, consider incorporating the competence-based curriculum into the 844 curriculum as a way of addressing the challenges that have affected the smooth transitioning from 844 to CBC system? Two, could the Cabinet Secretary confirm whether the Ministry will meet the full cost of implementing the CBC, particularly the purchase of resources necessary for carrying out the CBC lessons? Three, state the measures that the Ministry is taking to ensure that all the 1.2 million grade 7 learners transition to junior secondary school. Number four, Honorable Speaker, could the Cabinet Secretary explain the fate of the infrastructure that was early established in secondary schools using public funds in readiness for the junior secondary schools, which are now domiciled in primary schools? I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Kaunya. Question 045, member for Yata, Honorable Robert Basil. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to ask question 045 of 2023 to the Cabinet Secretary for Education. Could the Cabinet Secretary explain the criteria applicable to deployment of principals in junior secondary schools? Question number two. When will the teachers who have served as principals or deputy principals in acting capacities beyond the statutory six months be substantively appointed in those positions? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Basil. Question 046. The Honorable Member for Bahati, Irene Njoki. Can you give the Honorable Member the mic? Yeah, there you are, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. 
pursuant to the provisions of standard order 42A5, I rise to ask my question to the Cabinet Secretary for Interior and National Administration. Could the Cabinet Secretary explain the steps that the government has taken to fight against the glorification of illicit brews in Bahati constituency, including steps being taken to eradicate their production and sell? Question number two, could the Cabinet Secretary explain mechanisms put in place to enforce proper disposal of illicit brews nabbed by police during swaps to ensure that the product does not find its way into circulation. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Njoki. Statement by the member for Kitui Central, Makali Mulu. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, pursuant to standing order, 43, on behalf of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association Kenya branch, I wish to make a statement regarding Commonwealth Day 2023. Honorable Speaker, Commonwealth Day 2023 was marked on Monday, 13th March 2023, throughout the Commonwealth across the CPS nine regions and 180 parliaments and legislatures. The day is the annual celebration of Commonwealth of Nations, often held on the second Monday in March, and aims to unite 2.5 billion Commonwealth citizens in celebration of their shared values and principles, and in pursuit of a common future centered on sustainability and peace. The theme of the Commonwealth Day 2023 was forging a sustainable and peaceful common future, which combines the active commitment of the Commonwealth to support the promotion of peace, prosperity, and sustainability, especially through climate action, to secure a better future for the young people and to improve the lives of all Commonwealth citizens. In addition, Honorable Speaker, the year 2023 has been designated the Commonwealth Year of the Youth. And therefore, the Commonwealth Day focus was on delivering opportunities for the people, parliaments, governments, and institutions of the Commonwealth to connect and work together at many levels through a deep-rooted networks of friendship and goodwill, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, this is the first Commonwealth Day since Her Majesty passing on, and the, fa the first presided over by His Majesty King Charles III as King and heir of the Commonwealth. Further, Commonwealth Day 2023 marked the 10th anniversary of the signing of the Commonwealth Charter, which was signed by our late Majesty Queen Elizabeth II on 11th March 2013. Honorable Speaker, as I conclude, I urge all of us that moving forward, Kenya adheres to the theme of the Commonwealth Day 2023 and commits to supporting the promotion of peace, prosperity, and sustainability, especially through climate action, so as to secure a better future for our young people and improve the lives of all our people. Lastly, Honorable Speaker, I take this opportunity to inform the House that one of the top issues on the agenda of the CPA is to the change of legal status of the association from being a charity registered under British law to adopting a new legal status as an international interparliamentary, parliament, interparliamentary organization. This change of legal status, Honorable Speaker, seeks to enable the CPA continue to achieve its ambitions for the future. I thank you, Honorable Speaker, this statement is signed by yours truly, Honorable Dr. Makali Mulu, Kitui Sendro, member of the CP Executive Committee and Senior Regional Rep, Africa Region. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Makali. Next order. Order number eight, motion. Report on the consideration of the 2023 media term 
debt management strategy? Question to be put. Order, honorable members. Order, honorable members. This uh, order was debated and uh, responded to and is only putting the question, and I now put the question, which is that this House adopts the report of the Public Debt and Privatization Committee on its consideration of the 2023 medium-term debt management strategy laid on the table of the House on Thursday, 9th March 2023, and pursuant to the provisions of Section 15.4 of the Public Finance Management Act 2012, and standing order 232A, 7 and 8, approves the 2023 medium-term debt management strategy and B, makes the policy and financial resolutions contained in the first schedule to the order paper. As many of that opinion say aye. aye. Will those of the contrary opinion say nay? The ayes have it. Next order. Order number nine, motion. Report on the budget policy statement for the financial year 2023-2024 and the medium term. Chairperson, budget and appropriations. Honorable Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker. Uh, the report on the budget policy statement for financial year 2023-2024 at the medium term. That this House adopts the report of the Budget and Appropriations Committee on the budget policy statement, that is BPS, for the financial year 2023-2024, and a compendium of departmental committee reports. Honorable Chair, I'm told you should start by saying I beg to move oh. the following motion. Then oh. you move on. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker, for that guidance. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I beg to move that this House adopts the report of the Budget and Appropriations Committee on the Budget Policy Statement, that is BPS, for the financial year 2023-2024, and the Compendium of Departmental Committee Reports on the 2023 BPS, laid on the table of the House this morning on Wednesday 15th, March 2023, and pursuant to the provisions of Section 257 of the Public Finance Management Act 2012, and starting order 232.9 and 10. A, approves the budget policy statement for the financial year 2023-2024. B, makes the following financial resolutions with respect to the BPS 2023-2024 uh, at Kenya shillings 2.2 uh, trillion, 252 billion, 577 million, 400,000, of which, number one, executive, Kenya shillings, 2 trillion, 189 billion, 181 million, 400,000, of which, Office of the Auditor General, uh, at Kenya shillings, 7 billion, 698 uh, million, 700,000, number two, parliament, 40 million, 400, 40 billion, 402 million, and number three, judiciary, at Kenya shillings, 22 billion, 994, 22 billion, 994 million. Two, resolves that the allocation of the county government equitable share be approved at a Kenya shillings, 385 billion, 424 million, six. 116,047 uh, uh, Kenya shillings. Approves the equalization fund at Kenya shillings 7 billion, 867 million, uh, million. Four, approves the conditional grant of Kenya shillings 44 billion, 316 million, 798,386 as per the fourth schedule of the report of which on allocation of Kenya shillings, an allocation of Kenya shillings, 4.5 billion to the managed, managed equipment service, which is MES, will be subject to the submission of the evaluation report as per the, the, resolution, uh, the resolution of the House 
on non-financial matters as contained in the report, which is the, on recommendation number 32. Five, orders that the second schedule to the order paper forms the basis for the ceilings for financial year 2023-2024 budget uh, estimates. And six, resolves that the financial resolutions forms the basis for the 2023-2024 budget estimates. C, makes the policy resolutions contained in the third schedule to the order paper that is bracket non financial recommendations relating to the budget policy statement for the financial year 2023-2024. Honorable Speaker, I first want to take this opportunity to thank all the departmental committees which appeared before us over last week, Mr. Speaker, to bring forth the recommendations from the various MDAs that they oversight. Mr. Speaker, we have been working long hours to make sure that we meet this deadline. And Mr. Speaker, for the avoidance of doubt, even before I go to the main body of, the, of, of, of today's motion, Mr. Speaker, we have been in a splint inside a marathon. We have been working very fast, but also long hours. And I'm sure the majority of the members who belong to departmental committees have been in the same rush. Mr. Speaker, on the onset, because law is made for man, not man for the law, we have decided as one of the recommendations that we have to take this exercise of considering BPS with the seriousness it deserves, because this is the one of the main elements that we had in this house. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, from the onset, I want to make it very clear to all members that in our recommendation, one of the recommendations is to amend the PFM Act, Mr. Speaker, so that we increase the 14 days of the consideration of BPS from 14 days to 28 days, Mr. Speaker, so that departmental committees can get ample time to query the budget ceilings, to query the estimates, Mr. Speaker, of the MDAs that they oversight. Mr. Speaker, also, we have noted that when the departmental chairs appear before the Budget and Appropriations Committee, we usually allocate them around 30 minutes, maximum maybe 45. Mr. Speaker, some of the departmental committees are oversighting very monumental departments and sagas. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, it is improper that a chair appears before us, then we afford them only 30 minutes. And the reason for amending the PFM, Mr. Speaker, is so that going forward, and especially next year, we'll only be allocating not more than six departmental chairs to appear before the Budget Committee in a day, so that we have serious interrogations, Mr. Speaker, because this is a very serious exercise. And therefore, from the onset, that will be seeking so that, Mr. Speaker, we can take uh, enough time to make uh, our budget. Mr. Speaker, in regards to this BPS, because we are now in the process of budget making, there are several considerations that we made as the Budget and Appropriations Committee, and of course, representing this House. One of those issues, Mr. Speaker, that we considered is on the basis of how countries grow. How do countries grow, Mr. Speaker? And especially empirically, using the evidence that is there. Using countries that have, Mr. Speaker, ascended uh, uh, to economic growth. Mr. Speaker, across from ages to the modern economy, one of the elements that make a country grow is first of all for a country to explore all the agricultural resources they have and making sure that those economies cultivate every cultivatable acre, Mr. Speaker. On the same breath, economies grow when they realize the potential they have in terms of natural resources. Mr. Speaker, in the allocation of the ceilings that we have done, we have taken cognizance of the fact that our country is endowed. It is endowed in terms of agricultural resources, in terms of arable land, 
Mr. Speaker, even generally as a continent, Mr. Speaker, we are endowed massively. Mr. Speaker, also, we have a lot of natural resources, which are primary in nature. We have done nothing to deserve them. We have just gotten them, Mr. Speaker, from, uh, as natural resources. Mr. Speaker, the second element that every country grows is after considering what they can produce in terms of primary, then realizing that they have to value add every raw product that cannot be consumed in its primary uh, form, Mr. Speaker, making sure that we add value to the products that we cultivate in our farms and even adding value to the minerals, Mr. Speaker, that we get almost for free, Mr. Speaker, either underneath or even over the soil in terms of the forestry. Mr. Speaker, for that to happen, that is number one and two, in terms of exploring and exploiting natural resources and also agricultural resources, and also cultivating, Mr. Speaker, in terms of making sure that we add value, that process, Mr. Speaker, requires human resource. That cannot happen, Mr. Speaker, when we do not have a healthy human resource and a skilled human resource. And that is why within this BPS, we have gone ahead, Mr. Speaker, to make sure that we take care of health care. Health care in economic terms, Mr. Speaker, is the maintenance cost of labor. It is the maintenance cost of human capital. That is what, Mr. Speaker, on the health side, they call health care. Mr. Speaker, on the same side, for this human capital to be improved, a raw person, Mr. Speaker, a banal person to be improved, they need to, be, to go to school. After going to the basic school, Mr. Speaker, they also need to acquire skills. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, in the same breath, we have made sure that we have allocated enough sitting to be able to add value to the human resource that you have in the country, and especially by adding value, and, and especially in terms of tangible, practical skills. And that is why we have given a lot of cognizance to higher education, and especially, more specifically, to areas around Tibet, which, Mr. Speaker, their main domain is to make sure that we polish the human capital that we have, even as the healthcare, Mr. Speaker, maintains the same human capital. Mr. Speaker, also for other countries that have grown, they have limited their extravagance, Mr. Speaker, and their tastes to the products uh, um, produced within their countries. Mr. Speaker, across all the economies, from South Korea to Vietnam, and no others, including the very uh, stable economies, Mr. Speaker, they make sure that they match the aspirations of expenditure, Mr. Speaker, of the citizenry by having production lines that satisfy to that extravagance, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, also, a country which must import commodities because of necessity. Then, Mr. Speaker, the equivalent of the necessities that we have to get from outside, based on necessity, have to be compensated by what we export outside, Mr. Speaker, so that we do not become an economy that hemorrhages our foreign, um, foreign currency. Mr. Speaker, in fact, economically speaking, it is more plausible to pay 20 shillings for a product, the money that you remain within the country, than to pay 10 shillings for a, the same product for money that you'll take a flight. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, this goes and communicates towards what we were considering as this committee, that is budget, representing this house, in regards, Mr. Speaker, to making sure that we open up production in our country, we satisfy the local demand, and also, Mr. Speaker, we look for markets from far and wide to also export whatever we produce as surplus. Mr. Speaker, I want just to give a few, a few, uh, uh, some few figures in regards to the expenditure for the current BPS that we are considering. Mr. Speaker, within this BPS, and I want members to go with me, this is an approximately 3.6 trillion budget. Out of that 3.6 trillion budget, 2.19 is going to the executive. Mr. Speaker, among the same 3.6 trillion, 
around approximately 40 billion is the expenditure for this house that is parliament in regards to development and recurrent. Mr. Speaker, we have also allocated approximately 22 billion shillings to our judiciary. And Mr. Speaker, the remainder is the money that we take to the counties and that which I have just laid before or said before will be approximately 385 billion. There is another element of expenditure, Mr. Speaker, of something we call CFS, Consolidated Fund Services. Consolidated Fund Services, most of the bulk of this money goes into the repayment of debts, servicing our debts and especially interest rate without factoring in the net capital borrowing. Then, Mr. Speaker, in this financial year that we are considering, that is 2023-2024, we are talking of approximately an unprecedented figure of 991 billion shillings. We are almost crossing a trillion mark in terms of CFS, which majority of it, Mr. Speaker, goes into payment of interest rates. Of course, it also includes other areas, Mr. Speaker, like pensions and uh, the payments to our commissions. Mr. Speaker, on the revenue side, we are also envisioning to collect around 2.56 uh, trillion shillings in terms of ordinary revenue. Mr. Speaker, we are also looking forward into collecting around approximately 330 billion Kenya shillings in what we call CFS. Precisely, is around 323 billion, Mr. Speaker, into ANA, sorry, into ANA. These are monies that we receive as government and various agencies of government receive by offering service. Mr. Speaker, on the same breath, we are uh, looking forward into getting grants of around 48 billion Kenya shillings. And Mr. Speaker, now the balance that remains, which is around 720 billion, is money that we are looking forward into borrowing. And this borrowing, Mr. Speaker, majority of it, over 70%, we are looking forward into borrowing internally, Mr. Speaker. I know there is an effect of crowding out, Mr. Speaker, but also in terms, of, in terms of the international financial markets. The international financial markets, Mr. Speaker, in the current scenario, have cold. And Mr. Speaker, when financial markets have got cold, then they are jittery. And when they are jittery, they respond by having very high interest rates. And that is why we are looking more inward than outwards, Mr. Speaker, because the current global rates that we could fetch out there could not be very favorable for our economy. Mr. Speaker, there are a few areas I want to highlight that we considered in terms of laying the basis. And I mentioned some of them when we were considering the supplementary estimates. That is why today I'm not going to overemphasize. Mr. Speaker, the current scenario in terms of our economy we are still reading through the effects, Mr. Speaker, of the pandemic that has added, but the effects have not added. Mr. Speaker, our country is facing a very severe drought and famine. Mr. Speaker, definitely that compounds the issue of inflation, Mr. Speaker. And also, there is another global trend of the strengthening of US dollar, Mr. Speaker, that is making all the other foreign currencies, Mr. Speaker, lose ground in uh, comparison or comparative to the greenback. Mr. Speaker, these are very fundamental factors, and of course, in putting the fourth one, which is what is happening in Europe. Mr. Speaker, because the economy sometimes deals with facts, Mr. Speaker, some of these issues may feel like repetition. It is because the economy we discussed a month ago, it is the same economy we are confronting today. And some of these realities, Mr. Speaker, have not changed. What we have seen, Mr. Speaker, that we need to take cognizant of as this House, as the Budget Committee, as a country, is that when we have shocks, like the shocks that I have uh, mentioned there before, which prolongs for a long time, which takes too long, Mr. Speaker, sometimes interventions may not work. Sometimes policies are the ones that can work. When you have prolonged shock, Mr. Speaker, they then cease to be shocks. And therefore, they are not to be tackled through interventions. Then we have to create policies that will confront these kind of prolonged shocks, Mr. Speaker, because they cease to be actual shocks. And that is what we try to do 
by setting the current ceilings. Mr. Speaker, I don't want to take too long today, but I just want to highlight just a few things. Number one, we foresee an economy that will be growing at around 6% in 2023, which is a good thing, and especially given the fact that the global economy will be growing at a partly around 2%. Mr. Speaker, another fundamental thing that I want to uh, uh, bring forward to this committee is that we, as we consider the, 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 the ceilings, we are also considering, Mr. Speaker, the linkages among the various uh, sectors within the economy. That is why we are considering agriculture, MSME, housing, healthcare, digital highway, Mr. Speaker. And because I see the lights are on, Mr. Speaker, on the framework, on the implementation of BPS, we looked at the priorities and also the sequencing. And Mr. Speaker, also the funding priorities, Mr. Speaker, some which will be borrowing, others will be raising internally, and others through PPP. As I wind up, Mr. Speaker, I want to mention eight things which uh, the members should take note. Number one, we considered aggregation across all the value chains in this uh, budget because we are not looking at budget in terms of just items. We are looking at value chains. Aggregation and... Give the chair three minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Number one is aggregation, which is both in agriculture and MSME in terms of production. Number two is skill development, which I mentioned before, in terms of making sure our tivets are well equipped to be able to equip skills to the Kenyan youth. Number three, Mr. Speaker, is uh, the issue of JSS, Junior Secondary Schools, and CBC, which we have been able to allocate enough ceiling to cater for cap uh, capitation and also to cater for the gaps that there are in terms of infrastructure. Number five, Mr. Speaker, after consultations, even with the executive, and I want members to, 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 to give uh, some keen eye on this. Mr. Speaker, one of the recommendations that we have made, and it is in tandem with even the executive, is that as we implement the infrastructure funds that is usually given to the Ministry of Education, the bit of implementation going forward will always be channeled through NGCDF. Mr. Speaker, also, on these current uh, ceilings, we have also added one Kenya shillings, one billion, towards national government affirmative action fund, Mr. Speaker, to take care of the funds that our women reps oversee. Mr. Speaker, there is something also very interesting that this House should take note of. The current CDF as a FAD is just approximately 44 billion. Mr. Speaker, we have gone forward to raise that base to approximately 53 billion Kenya shillings in the year 2023-2024. Meaning, Mr. Speaker, every constituency will be getting an average of 20 to 30 million additional, Mr. Speaker, to take care of the many needs in our constituencies. Mr. Speaker, we have also been able to amend the ceiling in terms of the road infrastructure. The ceiling that was brought forward in this house by the Treasury. Mr. Speaker, because we represent constituencies that have got stored roads, Mr. Speaker, we amended that ceiling, Mr. Speaker, for the pending bill in terms of roads so that our contractors can go back to site. On top of the money we appropriated in the supplementary estimates, Mr. Speaker, the ceiling that was capped by the Treasury was around 55 billion to go into roads. Mr. Speaker, we amended that to around Kenya shillings 70 billion by adding 15 billion to go into road construction. Mr. Speaker, there are many, many, many other issues touching in our constituencies and our area of representation, and I beseech my fellow colleagues to go through our report and to go through the other annexures in the report, Mr. Speaker, to be able to, uh, to take in whatever we recommended. I want to thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and thank the honorable members, because out of the input you give us on the daily basis, then we are, uh, we are enriched. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, honorable chairman. Who is seconding you? Mr. Speaker, 
I want to call another very uh, deep member of the Budget and Appropriations Committee, a PhD in Economics, Honorable Makali Mulu, to second. Honorable Makali Mulu. Yeah, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, let me start by thanking my chairman for uh, that good moving of the motion. And the uh, Honorable Speaker say that this report is very detailed. Honorable Speaker, I would urge the Honorable Members to take time and read through this report. Basically because, Honorable Speaker, uh, with the time allocated, we may not be able to say all oh, what is in the report. But there are a few things we want to highlight. And Honorable Speaker, just to, as a way of introducing the, 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 the report, you all realize that we are working under very difficult economic times. So what we call the micro environment in which we are working is also shaky. And that means, Honorable Speaker, as we prepare this budget, there are a number of things we know to note. And it's important that as a house, we keep our eye on the things we are saying. I'll just be adding a few from what the chair say. So, Honorable Speaker, one of the things we have picked as we prepare this, we look at this BPS, is that uh, we realize that a, a lot of MDS, Honorable Speaker, we are picking a lot of duplication of efforts in a number of airport, uh, uh, MDS. And one of the things we'll be recommending, Honorable Speaker, is that uh, as we now go to the annual estimates, it would be very important for the House to make sure, and more so the departmental committees, to make sure that we don't have any duplication of efforts, so that departments are able to do standalone programs, standalone projects, without having one, two, three departments addressing the same program. The other issue, Honorable Speaker, which we have picked from uh, our analysis of the BPS, is that uh, the proposal on fiscal consolidation, when you look at the projections, this year the project is 4.4%, next year is about 36 and then the final year, the, the, the outer year in the MTF, MTF is 34 So, Honorable Speaker, when you look at the history in terms of BPS, these figures have always been there, the rolling plan, but we hardly adhere to them. So, we would urge that now, as we move to the future, this being a new government, it will be important that we stick to the figures we put in the three years, so that we don't have every time a rolling figure, and you can't really plan well. The other thing which is important, Honorable Speaker, to check is there is a proposal, Honorable Speaker, where the national government is going to be co-funding programs with the county government, either through conditional grants or through other arrangements. And it is important that, Honorable Speaker, where there is co-funding, in terms of the national government and the county government, we should have a very clear implementation framework. Because, Honorable Speaker, we have realized that as a result of having no clear implementation framework, we are not able even to implement most of the projects we put under the conditional grants. So it will be important, even as we approach the annual estimates, that that framework is in place to make sure that once the money is allocated, Honorable Speaker, implementation kicks off immediately. The other thing which, Honorable Speaker, we have picked from this report and it is important we note this. Honorable Speaker, we have all been talking about funding of students who join private universities through the, the normal uh, uh, placement by the, 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 the central board which places them. And Honorable Speaker, we have realized that our public universities have excess capacity. And you find in the budget, Honorable Speaker, a lot of money is being sent by the same government to students who have been sent to the private universities. So one of the recommendations we have put forward, Honorable Speaker, is that from this financial year, no money should be sent to private universities unless public universities have reported that they have no capacity to admit students in this country. Honorable Speaker, the other matter, which is critical, is the issue of pending bills, Honorable Speaker. Honorable members, we all know what is happening with the pending bills. It is important that as a country, we seriously discuss pending bills. Why am I saying this? You know, pending bills, Honorable Speaker, the people who are unfairly affected by pending bills are our own brothers, our own sisters, the people who fought for us. And Honorable Speaker, you'll be surprised, people have actually died as a result of these pending bills. People have been auctioned, and some, as a result of blood pressure, they end up dying. 
So, Honorable Speaker, it is important as a house we help this country and address this problem of pending bills. Because unless we do that, Honorable Speaker, we continue having problem. I see uh, my time is running out, Honorable Speaker. The other issue, Honorable Speaker, is important. It's the issue of the human wildlife conflict, Honorable Speaker, where a lot of damage happens, Honorable Speaker. And we have always been talking about the compensation program. So in this, pro in this policy, Honorable Speaker, we have seen that this year, it is important that resources are allocated so that we have what we call wildlife compensation insurance scheme. So that when our people are, have problems, with the, there's a conflict, they are compensated. And last but not least, Honorable Speaker, is the issue of the medical uh, equipment leasing program. We are saying before it is now allocating resources, it is important we have a clear framework between the county governments and the national government because this program, Honorable Speaker, has been there for many years. Thank you, Dr. Makali. I now propose the question on our members, which is that this House adopts the report of the Budget and Appropriations Committee on the Budget Policy Statement, BPS, for the financial year 2023-2024 and the Comedium of Departmental Committee reports on the 2023 BPS laid on the table of the House on Wednesday, 15th March, 2023, and pursuant to the provision of Section 25.7 of the Public Finance Management Act 2012 and Standing Order 2329 and 10. A. Approves the Budget Policy Statement BPS for the financial year 2023-24. B. Makes the following financial resolutions with respect to the BPS. One approves the national government's budget ceiling for the year 2023-24 at 2 trillion 252 billion 2577 million 400 million of which one executive Kenya shillings 2 trillion 189 billion 181 million 400 thousand of which Office of the Auditor General, seven billion six ninety eight million seven hundred thousand, two Parliament, forty billion four hundred and two million, three Judiciary, twenty two billion nine ninety four million, two resolve that the allocation of the current government equitable share be approved at Kenya shillings 385 billion 424 million 616,047 shillings. Three, approve the equalization fund at 7 billion 867 million. Four, approve the conditional grants at Kenya shillings 44 billion 316 million 798,386 shillings as per the fourth schedule of the report, of which an allocation of 4.5 billion to the Management Equipment Services, MES, will be subject to the submission of the evaluation report as per the resolution of the House on non-financial matters as contained in the report, recommendation number 32. Five, orders that the second schedule to the order paper forms the basis for the ceilings for the financial year 2023-24 budget estimates. And six, resolves that the financial resolutions forms the basis for the 2023-2024 budget estimates. C, makes the policy resolutions contained in the third schedule to the order paper now non-financial recommendations relating to the budget policy statement for the financial year 2023-24. I thank you. Honorable members, before we open a debate, allow me to go back to messages and deliver the following message from His Excellency the President. I'm sorry it came late. Honorable members, this is a message from the President on nomination of a person 
for appointment as the chairperson of the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission. Honorable members, pursuant to the provisions of Standing Order Number 42, I wish to convey the following message from His Excellency the President regarding the nomination of a person for appointment as chairperson of the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission. In the message, honorable members, His Excellency the President conveys that in exercise of powers conferred on him by Article 252B of the Constitution and Section 10.2 of the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission Act 2011, as read together with Section 3 and 5 of the Public Appointments Parliamentary Approval Act, Act Number 33 of 2011, he has nominated Dr. David Adang Oginde for appointment as the Chairperson of the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission. The President now seeks the approval of the appointment by this House. Honorable Member Standing Order 45 provides that upon receipt of notification of a nomination for appointment, such a nomination shall stand committed to the relevant departmental committee for consideration. In this regard, I hereby refer the message from His Excellency the President, together with the curriculum vitae, the report of the Public Service Commission, order. Order, Honorable Member, can you take your seats? is actually out of order for one, for you to be on your feet when the speaker is on his feet, and continue conversing loudly when a message as important as this is being conveyed. I hereby refer the message from His Excellency the President together with the CV, the report of the Public Service Commission, and other testimonials of the nominees to the Departmental Committee on Justice and Legal Affairs for consideration. Honorable Members, Section 8 of the Public Appointments Parliamentary Approval Act 2012 provides that the committee to which such nomination is referred shall consider the matter and table a report in the House within 28 days. In this regard, the committee should undertake approval hearings and submit its report within 28 days as provided for in the said law. Honorable members, in view of the foregoing, the committee is expected to immediately commence the approval process and notify the nominee and the general public of the time and place for holding the approval hearing. Thereafter, upon conclusion of the hearing, table its report on or before Tuesday, 11th April 2023, to enable the House to consider the matter within the statutory timeline. I thank you. We now go back to the budget policy statement. I give the first bite to the majority leader. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. And I rise to support this report of the Budget and Appropriations Committee on the budget policy statement for the financial year 2023 2024 and the medium term. And, Honorable Speaker, as the chair and the second did note, there's nothing much to say on this because, first, this is a very important process, as we said yesterday, as we debated the debt management strategy, that this now forms the basis of the annual estimates for the next financial year. And as we mentioned, Honorable Speaker, this is among the most important business that this House will transact within this session of Parliament, this first session of this year, in consideration of the annual estimates and approval of the budget policy statement. And allow me, Mr. Speaker, to thank the Budget and Appropriations Committee, all the members of this committee, and indeed those who also serve in the Debt Committee, because they have worked under very strenuous circumstances to ensure that we have both this report ready for approval and adoption by the House. And, Honorable Speaker, notably, you will see very good recommendations that uh, some of which have been mentioned, especially on the issues to do with uh, giving money that is being uh, appropriated to schools, police posts, police stations, administrative offices in our constituencies, money that is going to uh, the sub-county level to come as conditional grants under the NGCDF fund. And, Honorable Speaker, this is indeed very encouraging and commendable, and we'll see the actual implementation of projects, because government projects, Honorable Speaker, uh, time and... Uh, over time, Honorable Speaker, it has been noted 
and even those in government do agree that the implementation of NGCDF projects is much more efficient and uh, even the value for money is better achieved when you implement such projects through NGCDF. Honorable Speaker, in the last regime, and the Honorable Makali Mulu sat with me in the Budget and Appropriations Committee, we tried to prevail on the then government to allow the construction of what they call, I think, the 10,000 classrooms to be done through NGCDF. And there was a lot of resistance. And these projects dot all our constituencies in our schools. Some at 30%, others 60%, most, the best probably is at about 80, 85% completion. Most of them are not complete. And the quality of workmanship done in many of those classroom projects implemented under the schools, uh, the Ministry of Education infrastructure, infrastructure Program, the quality is not as good as those that members of parliament supervise under the NGC and DF committees. And therefore, I want to encourage that even for police stations, uh, administrative offices for our DOs or our DCCs, it is better when this money comes through NGCDF. And I note that indeed the committee has made that recommendation. Honorable Speaker, more importantly, again, Honorable Speaker, when I served as the chair of the Budget and Appropriations Committee and those who served with me who are still here, like the Honorable Sarah Correra, will bear me witness. Successively, in all our reports from 2017 October, we did indicate that there were no resources that were being committed to the Big Four agenda. And that is how the Big Four agenda, Mr. Speaker, came to die a natural, slow, but painful death to the people of Kenya. I am glad that the Kenya Kwanzaa administration under President William Ruto is not just about talk, that when we talked about the bottom-up economic transformation agenda, that through the office of the president, they have been able to narrow down to the value chains that will actualize this bottom-up economic transformative agenda. And they have identified the value chains that you see that the committee is now asking the MDAs, our ministries and departments and agencies of government, to ensure that they work together with the National Assembly to ensure that the annual estimates that come in are value chain oriented. And if I dare mention, Honorable Speaker, some of those value chains are in areas that touch the lives of the people at the bottom of the pyramid. The leather industry, the dairy industry, textiles, Honorable Speaker, with the growth of cotton and ginning and processing of cotton, tea, rice, edible oils that have become largely out of reach for many Kenyans, Honorable Speaker, building material sector, Honorable Speaker, that has a huge uh, uh, ripple, ripple effect on the economy, and also mining. And I did uh, see the CES mining talk, talking about support for mining at the very local level so that those people we see every now and then being buried in uh, Nyanza, in parts of Western, in uh, mines that uh, people work in that are not safe can be supported. And of course, the blue economy that will go to support many of our people uh, that work around uh, our land. One minute to wind Just up. one minute, Honorable Speaker, to conclude that, that those who work around our lakes and oceans, Honorable Speaker, a resource, a huge and rich resource for our country that has not been exploited, that we shall now focus on those areas, Honorable Speaker. And I want to support Honorable Speaker and urge uh, the House to support this report and indeed be keen as we engage with our MDAs during the annual estimates later this, uh, this uh, next month, uh, the month of April, towards the end of May, we ensure that indeed the National Treasury and MDAs abide to this resolution to ensure that our estimates are oriented to those value chains. Honorable Speaker, as I speak to our colleagues, to also encourage the people back in Wyards to now identify projects within the annual estimates that will also be beneficial to their areas and also be beneficial to those who are keen on business. With these value chains, then you know where to uh, direct your attention to if you're in business, if you are a prospective in, uh, investor, then you now know the focus that government is focused on and be able to uh, focus on those areas. With that, Honorable Speaker, I support. Rachel Nyamai, Kitui South. She's not here, she's top on the list. Omboko Milemba. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker, for this opportunity. 
to speak on the BPS. Uh, I must first congratulate the Budget Committee for uh, work well done, and more so appreciate the government of the day for one thing, that every Wednesday we have private members motions which do come on the floor of the House. And many times uh, there's a tendency for the House to feel that it's just a talking uh, shop, but that's not the case. Because I remember some of the proposals that have been put in this budget are ones that were brought on the floor by private members during the Wednesday motions. And one of them is one that regarded the fact that there was so much money left in the Ministry of Education for infrastructural development, and which later was used as per the interest of the minister per se. And I'm happy to hear from the Chair of Budget that finally that particular area has been restructured and with the agreement of the executive itself that that money be channeled through the NGCDF. I remember in the last parliament I did bring a motion on the, on, the, on the floor of the House concerning that matter because that money was not used properly. And even when they had a higher allocation of about one million per class during the late Magoha's classes that was, were constructed across the country, still those classes remain unfinished to date like the leader of majority has spoken about them. So I think that's a very good step. Also, one other good policy brought forward is the policy that increases the NGCDF itself in terms of the amount that will be allocated. Uh, but this is a challenge to the House, that if we have been given that mandate to carry out this, then we have to work very hard so that we showcase. Remember, this is an area where also we have many destructors outside there who don't believe sometimes in our work. So I would want to urge the House that as this happens, then we have to go back to our constituencies, God willing, and do a very good job so that we prove ourselves that this is a better channel of devolving, of getting money to the ground, not really devolving, but getting money to the ground, especially money that comes from the national government for effective use and efficient use. Honorable Speaker, there is also a very good policy made on the issue of roads. The roads money which has been increased and that increment should be able to facilitate most of our roads that are back down there to start working. All this, including the monies that have been allocated to several value chains, is supposed to trigger the economy to start working. Because if there will be contractors on the roads, if there will be construction work going on in school infrastructure and other areas, then we should see now more money circulating within the economy and within the country and this should excite the economy so that we start growing once again and the people can start feeling that there's flow of money within, within the system. Another policy, Honorable Speaker, that I must loud is the issue and special attention that has been given to the JSS, which is currently grappling with many uh, problems that concern taking off. And, and uh, we have been told by the Chair that enough money and good ceiling has been allocated for the JSS, that's junior second school, and, C, and CBC uh, curriculum so that the children who are in school and are languishing there without teachers, without materials, without capitation, can now enjoy the education, given that education is not only compulsory in Article 53 of the Constitution, but it's also, it's also free to be provided by the government. But more so, like I did mention on the issue of what the private members' motions always do urge government to do. This was a fantastic one, Chair. Honorable Speaker, that finally we are removing the students from the private universities. Hear me that many of our public universities are dying out, yet we are taking a lot of money, public money, to the private universities that are owned by individuals who are making profits, yet our own universities are dying because they don't have money. I'm happy to hear that, uh, that this private universities will not get the students who are otherwise absorbed by, by, by the, the, the public and therefore growth of the public universities. With those very few remarks, Honorable Speaker, I want to thank you and support. Honorable Charles Onchoke Bonchari.
you know, members, when you log in to seek the permission of the chair to speak and you decide to walk out, it is better to disengage your card so that you don't clog the screen uh, against members who are legitimately in the house. Uh, the Honorable Robert Mbui. Yes, Honorable Gikaria, what is it? Honorable Speaker, maybe, uh, I don't know, because in the morning I was here, same spot, and I put my card very early. I was just checking with the clerks. I was told I'm not number six again, just disappeared. So I, I am at intervention, it is not showing. Honorable Speaker, I, I think uh, we also need, because uh, as uh, Ishonga was saying that we should be coming here by 2.30, I was here actually five minutes before that. And uh, when you don't get an opportunity to speak again, it becomes, and of course, Honorable Speaker, we really want to support the agenda of this. So Honorable, it's, it's important for them to check. If the cards are not working, then we could be told. You so are nowhere on the screen, Honorable Yes, Gikaria. but I, it is on the, on the two, actually, you, blinking. You probably oh. should relocate to a different seat. Uh, I will take your point of order as a constructive solicitation to speak. And uh, I will uh, consider you in that regard. R Robert Mboui. Th thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I hope my time hasn't been taken because there's very little time and so much to say. Mr. Speaker, first and foremost, I just want to say that uh, um, this House has powers given to it by the Constitution. And I think, Mr. Speaker, it's important that uh, Kenyans note that uh, today we are dealing with a budget policy statement we will come and deal with the budget of the country. And Mr. Speaker, I'm saying that because there seems to be sometimes some of us who forget that the power of the past is actually vested in us as members of National Assembly. And therefore, that means that there is no one else outside this house that we can go to solicit for development other than to fight for it and put it in our budget. So Mr. Speaker, I'm saying that because those ones outside there are the ones that should be begging us for opportunities for development, not the other way around. Mr. Speaker, our strategies as a house must be Wanjiko Mweni friendly. And, and Mr. Speaker, I'm saying that because we have been elected as representatives of the people, we have the opportunity to deal with the budgets, so we must ensure that the prioritization of this government is things that are going to be beneficial to all our voters. Mr. Speaker, it doesn't matter which part of the country one comes from. All Kenyans have the same problems, the same challenges. The economy, when it does bad, it is doing badly in the north, it is doing badly in the south, it is doing badly in the east, it is doing badly in the west. So we must all rise up and work together to ensure that we hold this country to account. Mr. Speaker, on the issue of, uh, of inflation, it's unfortunate that uh, January last year, inflation was at 5.4%. January this year, it was at 9%, and it is rising. Mr. Speaker, I even sometimes wonder, when they talk about 9% increase, that would mean that something that was 100 shillings would be costing 109 shillings. The truth is, it is almost 50% in my estimate, because something that was 100 shillings is probably 150. So we have a problem of inflation, and that is something that we need to deal with. Mr. Speaker, um, maybe one of these reasons, uh, because I, 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 I have looked at these strategies here, and I've been asking myself, where is it? that the common monarchies problems are being addressed? Where is it that the cost of living is being brought down? Where is it that the cost of hunger is being brought down? Mr. Speaker, maybe that's why we have, a, we have a date with destiny on 20th next week on Monday, because we are not dealing with the problems of the people. We must ensure that we deal with the problems of the people. I've looked at the five pillars. You know, five pillars touted as a bottom-up economic strategy, and it is a replica of the Big Four agenda. And let me point out, one of, the, one of the pillars is agriculture. On Big Four, they called it food security. One of the strategies, the other one, is housing and settlement. Big Four, they called it affordable housing. The other strategy is health care. Big Four, uh, they called it universal health care. There is a point of order from the chair of the committee. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I'm wondering, is it in order for the honorable member to eloquently state that this house has the power of the pass, and therefore we can do anything around budget and the economy, he is a member of this house himself. And therefore, 
that responsibility is actually on his shoulders, actually being a leader. The same mouth, Mr. Speaker, within a second, then he says he has a date with destiny on 20th to seek for the justice of Kenyans again in Madamano. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, is it proper for the member to mislead Kenyans? Is he in order, Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker, I will ignore and continue. That is the kingpin of uh, Central Kenya speaking. I don't want to answer him. Mr. Speaker, um, let, me, let me just go straight to the second schedule that has all these uh, you know, amounts set out. Eh? And uh, I want to go to the one that talks about basic education. In the basic education schedule, you can see that uh, the amount of money that is set aside for basic education, that is primary education and secondary education, which has GSS also, is 19.7 billion for capital expenses. So I'm wondering, how is that enough for us to build classes Labs, labs for art, labs for home science, labs for pre-technical, labs for sciences, labs for ICT, 19.7 uh, billion. Really, Mr. Speaker, I think there is, a, there is a big problem in GSS. It's not been addressed. I think that's a, one of the things that I thought this government would at least try and do. So, Mr. Speaker, we will, we will keep talking about it because, you know, in the, on the floor of the House, we have the opportunity to talk. But when it comes to voting, I'm certain that the majority will always have their way. But Kenyans must know that the issue of JSS, if it is not addressed now, it will continue haunting our children, and our children will continue to suffer. Even the teachers. Your time is up, Robert. Honorable members, before I give the next member, the Sakori Gendam, number 006 of 2023, on the message from the president on the nominee for gender, National Gender and Equality Commission, I'm advised that we inadvertently committed the nominee to the Departmental Committee on Labor. In fact, it should be the Departmental Committee on Social Protection, and therefore it's so ordered. Next member will be the Honorable Joseph Emade Trukana Central. Thank you so much, Honorable Chair, for giving me this opportunity and also to give my input on the BPS for 2023-2024. Honorable Chair, I want to congratulate the Chairman for the committee for bringing us to speed on the ceilings, the priorities, performance, and the projections in the BPS. Honorable Chair, I want to thank him so much also for considering that uh, CDF has one of the lowest allocations in this country, knowing that CDF is one of the vehicles of development, actually physical development in this country. Honorable Chair, I also want to thank you so much for... Yes, Honorable... Yes, Honorable Member, what is out of order? Give uh, the Honorable Member the microphone. Mr. Speaker, I would like to know when you ceased being the Speaker and became the Chair. What is the difference? I need to know, I need to be guided. The difference is like day and night. <laughs> the speaker is not the chair of this session, he's the speaker of the house. Honorable speaker, thank you so much for your guidance. I think my honorable member was asleep <laughs> while knowing that I was giving that title to the honorable chair for budget and appropriation. Remember for your future guidance, when you debate, you don't address anybody other than the speaker. So the, the chair of the committee has his accolades, but you address him through the speaker. Fully, fully guided, honorable speaker. I rise in regard to section 15, subsection 2A of the Public Finance Management Act, honorable speaker that uh, 
there is the need for the chair of the committee, budget and appropriation, to help us understand how much of the budget has gone to development. Because the Public Finance Management Act gives us the understanding that there must be a minimum of 30% of the total expenditure that must go to development. And Honorable Chair, I give that with the understanding that recurrent expenditure is unsustainable. And it is in that regard that uh, the Chair was able to give us the understanding that 14 days to look or to delve into the BPS is a shorter period of time. And maybe if we can give it 28 days, that will be an opportune time for us to understand how much of this has gone to recurrent. And it will help us in understanding or giving much impetus on understanding what goes into recurrent. Your speaker, that is what I wanted to, to give. And uh, just as an input, but I want to support the, the report. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. Aseka Huisero. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, let me also join colleagues in supporting this budget policy statement for the financial year 2023-2024. Mr. Speaker, budget policy statement lays the framework of the government of the day on critical matters, one being the revenue uh, projections, the sharing of revenues between national government and county government, and lastly, how the government intends to grow the economy. Mr. Speaker, let me thank the departmental committees that did input into this report. Thank also the Budget and Appropriation Committee that also burned midnight oil to ensure that we have this report. Looking at this document, Mr. Speaker, the current administration focuses its energy on five pillars, one, agriculture and transformation, where it intends to ensure that production of food is scaled up to fight and to secure the, the country against food insecurity. In this, this document says that the government wants to input and to ensure that farm inputs are available to farmers. This government wants, Mr. Speaker, to ensure that markets for these products are available. It wants to do value chain addition on specific items. Mr. Speaker, if you look at the report, they talk about the rice, uh, production of edible oils. They talk about, Mr. Speaker, tea and coffee. To value, add, uh, to value chain add on these items so that farmers can get value for their money. Mr. So Speaker, this document also talks about healthcare, and its focus is also on NHIF to ensure that it, best, it is based on households rather than individuals. The document talks about construction of specialized hospitals and equipping them like the cancer centers just to help Kenyans who are suffering to reduce their cost of medication from moving, moving from rural areas maybe to seek specialized uh, uh, care in towns. So, Speaker, this document also talks about digital infrastructure. Uh, the government wants to automate government services to ensure that these uh, services are under one platform for efficiency and uh, effective service delivery. But, also, but doing this, Mr. Speaker, there are challenges that uh, I think uh, the gays who are dealing with these matters must also be aware of. We have erratic weather conditions that, Mr. Speaker, may affect the intent to produce enough food. Uh, the meteorological department has given warnings on the erratic uh, weather conditions. Uh, uh, rainfall may not be enough. So as much as we are looking at increasing production, we must also focus more on irrigation so that we ensure that that item is attained. Mr. Speaker, two, there are also issues with depleted foreign exchange, which will affect the economy. Uh, this must be addressed to ensure that the stability of our shilling, to ensure that the stability of our shilling, Mr. Speaker, is guaranteed. And lastly, Mr. Speaker, 
uh, when you look at the allocations given to basic education, allocations given to CDF, it gives us hope that going forward, transition from 844 to CBC will be seamless. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honorable David Gikaria. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, for giving me this opportunity. And I want to thank you also for my consideration. Honorable Speaker, let me first of all thank the Chair of the Budget Committee for our good work that we've done. And true to the fact, Honorable Chair, the budget sometimes I feel for the members. They sit throughout so many hours, uh, of course, listening to over 20 something uh, chairs uh, who have been given various uh, times to be able to. Uh, to consider uh, their request. And I want to thank the chair. Uh, when we started, uh, we started with Honorable Ishongwa then last term as, a, as the chair of budget. But I think uh, equally, uh, Honorable uh, Dede Nyoro is equal to the start task and is doing a very good work with his team. Honorable chair, the first thing that uh, the chair did comment was about uh, the time frames. And it is true, Honorable Chair. For example, I, I sit in the Environment Committee. And we, we have never even been able to visit some of uh, the projects that have already been mentioned within the Ministry of Environment, Climate Change, Forestry, and Mining. The other bit is, for example, in mining. We have never. So by the time you're given uh, that kind of a BPS, and you have no rough idea whatsoever of what they are talking about, then it becomes important, as the chair was indicating, that we have enough time that uh, the uh, members of various committee can be able to interrogate their ministries effectively, and we can be able to give, as and when you are asked to uh, allocate some amounts for a certain project, effectively you can be able to say yes, these uh, projects require some additional funding. It is because you have been able to visit. But with the new uh, Parliament Honorable Chair and committees being new uh, in their work, and having not visited some of these uh, projects, Honorable Chair, then that is when, uh, what the Chair again was talking about, wastage. That much of this money uh, goes to waste because the committee has not had enough. Maybe after a year or two, once the committee is in place, then we can be able to, uh, to fully interrogate uh, some of these uh, uh, projects that uh, different ministries uh, do indicate and ask for funding. Honorable Chair, the other bit is uh, uh, on, on matters to do with the BPS, Honorable Chair. It is that, uh, for example, the mining, as it has been mentioned, Honorable Chair. Mining could be the game changer in this country in terms of revenue collection, in terms of uh, employment, in terms of uh, the economic development of this country. And uh, when we had an opportunity to sit with the Minister for Mining, Mweshimiwa uh, Mvuria, uh, he did mention that in the past, his mining ministry was referred as a mining that just give a licensing ministry. They just give a license and they sit back. And they were not able to do anything more than that. But Honorable uh, uh, Speaker, I want to agree with Honorable um, Vuria that if and if some money and enough money is given to the ministry for it to first of all undertake, this government did spend, uh, not this government, but the, pre the previous government did spend over seven billion shillings, Honorable Speaker, to do something they were calling aerial uh, geosurvey, to understand how much minerals do we have in this country. And we, we spent a staggering seven billion. Honorable Speaker, with that kind of a, an expenditure, and uh, the reports are out telling us where we have different, this country have over 970 different minerals. Honorable Speaker, if we could be able now to now get that money to be able now to follow the circuit, then this country will be uh, the biggest beneficiary, will be going to, on record as one of the greatest mining country in the world, out of the 970 honorable speaker, we have a mine that is in this country and only found in this country and very expensive. So we want to agree with the uh, value chain as it has been indicated. 
but we are at the same time requesting the budget committee to consider that value chain because that is where every government goes wrong. You identify a value chain, we request can you give it enough funding and enough resources for them to be able to achieve the potential that is within the ministry. Lastly, is about forestry, honorable speaker. Forestry is another uh, area. Honorable Women Rep. Transoya. Give her the mic. There you are. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this, uh, this chance to appreciate and also uh, support this uh, report that has been brought by the Committee of Budget. I want to appreciate our president, Mr. Speaker. I felt it could be so bad if we end this without uh, somebody having appreciated the president, especially from uh, this group of women reps, because we've been uh, allocated one billion extra, which is very important for us as women reps. As uh, you can see, Mr. Speaker, it has been very difficult for women reps to come back to the house, just because the amount that we've been allocated all along has been very little. So at times when we are doing our projects, it, is not, uh, it cannot be seen on ground because what we have is very little. So I want to take this chance to appreciate the president and also appreciate the committee for the work that, have, that they have done. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. The Honorable Antonio Roach. What is out of order, Ruku? Hold on, on Honorable Anton Oloch. Mr. Speaker, sir, I rise on uh, point on four, order number 96. 95, sorry. Uh, that uh, the members are l repeating the, themselves when it comes to the debate. Uh, so I think uh, it is high time to call the mover uh, to reply, Mr. Speaker, sir. Yes. No. No. I have given the floor to yes. Anton Oluoch. Uh, let him finish and I see if I can call the mover. Anton Oluoch, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, and I want to thank the Budget Committee for coming up with um, uh, this uh, Budget Policy Statement Report. And allow me first to comment on and agree with the chair of budget on the question of timelines as we were engaging with our respective committees. I do agree that the timelines involved in these ought to be expanded from um, 14 to 28 days. And one of the experiences that we had as a committee looking at our respective departmental committees is that the respective uh, sagas focus too much on the budget ceiling at the expense of policy. And for these reasons, other than the recommendation that we expand the time, I think this committee ought to have gone a step forward and say that we need to unbundle uh, budget policy statements from the budget ceiling so that these issues are considered separately and that they are able to uh, be processed in a manner that allows policy to be determined as policy as the anchor for budgets and that budget ceiling and the crunching of numbers be able to be uh, done also separately. Secondly, I want to agree that um, the medium term uh, strategy that was adopted yesterday, I think this House resolved that it ought to be attached with the budget making process. And I think this is an important thing, and I do recognize that the Budget Committee has given recognition to the fact that um, the medium term uh, management strategy ought to be uh, attached to the budget uh, uh, policy statement. Mr. Speaker, I however do wish to uh, uh, ask that this committee should have gone a step further and noted that in attaching debt in terms of how debt, public debt is defined, and this is a point that um, I wished to have raised yesterday but it is still very germane today, we ought to have gone further and recommended in terms of policy that public debt ought to be reopened in terms of its definition. 
the, priori the prioritization of foreign debt as a priority of one of the things that we need to uh, offset from our budget every year at the expense of, for example, pending bills is something that we ought to look at. Public debt, in my view, ought to be redefined in such a broad way that we are able to look as debt that is incurred in the course of government engagement. This includes uh, public uh, 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 pending bills, which, if unlocked, would be able to go into the economy. The manner in which we have defined public debt right now allows us to send foreign exchange and our revenues to the foreigners at the expense of what we do in our uh, country today. I also want to support the resolution uh, that the budget ought to engage uh, in terms of the National Government Constituency Development Fund in terms of when administration blocks are being built, when police stations are being built. And if you look at what happened in the um, social interventions uh, and the stimulus package during the last administration, billions of shillings were spent by government in making very substandard schools, very, uh, very, making very substandard desks, which ought to have been attached to CDF. CDF is so circumscribed in the manner in which you do procurement, in the manner in which you isolate projects that you do, that it actually goes way beyond what government and county governments do in terms of the manner in which they undertake and implement their projects. And so I do recommend that the last point that I wish to make is the question of equity. When we engage in public debt and talk about uh, foreign debt, there ought to be an understanding and appreciation that when we incur foreign debt, the payment of this foreign debt is done by every Kenyan. So that foreign debt that is incurred ought to go into development of all Kenyans corners of this country, not just Nairobi and its environs, so that Turukana, uh, Garissa, Wajia ought to be having 50% of the money that we borrow in terms of foreign debt, and then the other countries that have been developed before, starting from Nairobi, Kiambu, Mombasa, Kisumu. Your time is up. Honorable members, as Seek your concurrence or from Honorable Ruku's request that the mover be called upon to reply. As members of that opinion say aye. aye. Will those of the condo opinion say nay? Yes. Do the ayes have it? Dindi. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. And uh, I want to thank all the members through the speaker for the various contributions which we have had. Even the positive uh, criticism is a way to tell us to, that there is room for improvement. So I want to thank every member in their contribution. And uh, we have noted all the comments and concerns. Mr. Speaker, I beg to reply. Honorable members, I will now put the question. Honorable Angela and Jen Kihara, it's actually not very decent to walk out when such an important question like this is being put. Take your seats. <laughs> Honorable members, I now put the question which is that this House adopts the report of the Budget and Appropriations Committee on the Budget Policy Statement, P BPS, for the financial year 2023-24, and a compendium of departmental committee reports on the 2023 BPS laid on the table of the House on Wednesday, 15th March 2023, and pursuant to the provisions of Section 25.7, of the Public Finance Management Act 2012 and Standing Order 2329 and 10. A, approves the Budget Policy Statement BPS for the financial year 2023-24. B, makes the following financial resolutions with respect to the BPS. One, approves the National Government's Budget Ceiling for the year 2023-24. 
at 2 trillion, 252 billion, 577 million, 400,000, of which one executive, 2 trillion, 189 billion, 181 million, 400, of which Office of the Auditor General, 7 billion, 698 million, 700,000, to Parliament, Kenya shillings, 40 billion, 402 million, judiciary, 22 billion, 994 million, two, resolve that the allocation to the county government's equitable share be approved at Kenya shillings, 385 billion, 424 million, 616,047 shillings. Three, approve the equalization fund at 7 billion, 867 million. Four, approve the conditional grants at 44 billion, 316 million, 798,386 shillings as per the fourth schedule of the report, of which an allocation of 4.5 billion to the management equipment services MES will be subject to the submission of the evaluation report as per the resolution of the House on non-financial matters as contained in the report, recommendation number 32. Five, orders that the second schedule to the order paper forms the basis for the ceilings for the financial year 2023-24 budget estimates, and six, resolves that the financial resolution forms the basis for the 2023-24 budget estimates. C, makes the policy resolutions contained in the third schedule to the order paper non-financial recommendations relating the budget policy statement for the financial year 2023-24. Will as men of that opinion say aye? aye? Will those of the condo opinion say nay? The ayes have it. Manjala and Kihara, you can now proceed to where you are going. <laughs> Order. Order number 10, motion, consideration of nominees for appointment as members of the National Climate Change Council. Yes, uh, honorable member, under what standing order is the order of intervention? No, uh, I am rising on a point of intervention, Mr. Speaker. Yes. As a matter of concern. Yes. Mr. So Speaker, this supplementary, this uh, budget policy statement, among other important motions or programs that come to this House, Mr. Speaker, there has come a routine where members rise to call a mover or a move of the House, even on an important matter that requires a proper debate. Because of members who, who do not come to this House, some of us are loyal, we come to this House, we want to debate, we are cut short, Mr. Speaker. Unless we, we respect the such kind of thing so that we have time to discuss this matter as a country, so that we, we want to build us, those of us who are new, so that we become great debaters than cutting us short on uh, the mood of the house, the less called the mover. This kind of thing, Mr. Speaker, will actually limit our faculties and the programs that we think that we need to put in this house, Mr. Speaker. We require guidance going forward, Mr. Speaker, on these matters. Honorable Joseph, nobody will curtail the growth of your faculties. <laughs> I can assure you, you will be, you know when the chair is asked to call the mover to reply, the resolution lies with the house. That's why I put the question. And I heard you say, I, for the mover to respond. <laughs> so you can't, <laughs> you, you can't have your cake and eat it. <laughs> Have you called the next order? The chairperson, Departmental Hello, Committee Hello. on Environment, Forestry, and Mining. Honorable Speaker. Honorable Kikaria. 
Honorable Speaker, that uh, taking into consideration the finding of the Joint Committee Honorable of the... Honorable Gikaria, start by saying I beg to move the following motion. Honorable Speaker, I would like to move the following motion of uh, consideration of nominee for appointment as members of the National Climate Change Council. That's taking into consideration the finding of the Joint Committee of the National Assembly De uh, Departmental Committee on Environment, Forestry and Mining, and the Senate Standing Committee on Lands, Environment and Natural Resources. It is this report on the vetting of the nominee for appointment as members of the National Climate Change Council laid on the table of the House on Tuesday, 14th, March 2023, and pursuant to Article 132 2F of the Constitution, Section 74 of the Climate Change Act, Section 3 and 8 of the Public Appointments Parliamentary Approval Act 2011, and Standing Order 216.5F of the National Assembly and the Standing Order. Uh, standing order number 2284F A approves the appointment of the following persons as members of the National Climate Change Council. One, M Emily Mwende Waita. Two, John Kioli Kalua. Three, Professor George Odera Outa and B, rejects the appointments of Umra Omar as a member of the Climate Change Council. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Speaker, on Tuesday the 14th, as indicated, 2023, uh, you issued a communication from His Excellency the President regarding the nominee as I have read. Mr. Speaker, sir, pursuant to Standing Order 45-1 and the fourth schedule of the Standing Order, the names and CVs, curricular vitae of the four nominees who are referred to the Departmental Committee on Environment, Forestry and Mining, jointly sitting with the Senate Standing Committee on Lands, Environment and Natural Resources. Mr. Speaker, on Friday the 17th, February 2023, pursuant to Section 8 of the Public Appointments Parliamentary Act, uh, Committee Approval Act number 33 of 2011, the Clerk of the National Assembly did, uh, uh, and the Clerk of the Senate, in writing, invited nominees for vetting, for vetting hearing indicating the time and place for holding the approval hearing. Mr. Speaker, pursuant to the provisions of Section 69 of the Public Appointments Parliamentary Approval Act 2011, the Clerk of the National Assembly and the Clerk of the Senate, in writing, invited, sorry, of the Senate, and uh, placed an advertisement in the print media on Monday, 20th uh, February 2023, inviting the public to submit memoranda by way of write, written statement on oath or a stroke of David contesting the suitability of the nominees. The advertisement indicated that the submissions were received on Monday, 27th, February 2023 at 5 p.m. Mr. Speaker, by close of that day, the committee had not received any written statement on oath contesting the suitability of any of the nominees. The clerk of the National uh, Assembly and the clerk of the Senate wrote to the respective uh, agencies, the EACC, KRA, DCI, uh, HELP, and uh, the Registrar of Political Party, requesting for reports with respect to the nominee on matter touching to integrity, tax compliance, political affiliation, and loan repayments. Mr. Speaker, sir, 
We received clearance report for the nominee from the Kenya, uh, for, from uh, Kenya Revenue Authority, the DCI, ESCC uh, help, and of course, Honorable Speaker, the Register of Political Parties. Mr. Speaker, sir, the National Assembly Departmental Committee on Environment, Forestry and Mining, jointly sitting with the Standard Standing Committee on Lands, Environment, and Natural Resources, conducted uh, approval hearing uh, on Tuesday, 7th, March 2023. The nominee were vetted in accordance with the provisions of the Constitution, the Public Appointments Parliamentary Approval Act 2011, and the National Assembly Standing Orders on their suitability or otherwise for appointment as members of the National Climate uh, Change Council. Pursuant to Section 7 of the Public Appointments Committee for Approval uh, Act 2011 and Section 71 of the Climate Change Act Number 11 of 2016, the con committee considered various issues during the approval hearing. First, the Joint Committee considered the procedure used to arrive at the nominee. The Joint Committee observed that the pursuant to Section 72. F, G, H, and I of the Climate Change Act 2016, the President is required to nominate a person for appointment uh, to the National Climate Change Council if that person has expertise and experience in matters of climate change, economic, finance, law, enforcement, and public uh, administration. As a citizen, uh, is a Kenya is a citizen of Kenya, fulfills the requirement of Chapter Six of the Constitution and has at least ten years experience in the relevant field. Additionally, Honourable Speaker, the Joint Committee observed that the four persons nominated must must be representatives of a private sector, nominated by a body representing the largest number of institution in the private sector. B, the civil society, nominated by the most representative registered National Umbrella Association of Civil Societies Working on Climate Change. C, marginalized community within the meaning of Article 260 of the Constitution who has knowledge and experience in matters relating to indigenous knowledge and lastly, D, the academia nominated by the Commission of University Education. Mr. Speaker, the Joint Committee in determining the suitability of the nominee took into consideration the provisions of leadership and integrity as outlined under Chapter 6 and the, of the Constitution. Further, the committee observed that the suitability of the nominee should be evaluated holistically, taking into account their academic credentials, professional training, experience, background, and personal qualities, as well as the performance of the nominee during the approval hearing, which is very key, Honorable Speaker. The National Assembly Department Committee on Environment, Forestry, and Mining, jointly with the Sitting Committee on Senate, Lands, Environment, and Natural Resources, having vetted the nominee made the following general observation. That according, in accordance with Article 71, 78, 1 of the Constitution and Section 72 of the Climate Change Act 2016, the nominees are Kenya citizens. Two, that the nominees satisfy the statutory requirements on leadership and integrity having been cleared by the Directorate by Directorate of Criminal Investigation, KRA, on tax compliance and the Higher Education Loans Board. Three, the nominees satisfy the requirement of Chapter 6 of the Constitution on leadership and integrity. Four, that the nominee have never been convicted in a court of law for criminal offenses in the past three years. Five, has stipulated in Article 75 one of the Constitution, the nominee have no potential conflict of interest. 
Six, that the nominee do not hold offices in any political party, hence satisfy a requirement of Article 77.2 of the Constitution, in exception, Honorable Se uh, Speaker, of uh, one nominee, uh, Omar, uh, Umra Omar, who, as at the time, was a member of the Safina Party, and he had the, the production of uh, uh, the, uh, the indicating that he uh, uh, that she was a member of that. Last seven, the nominee has never been dismissed from office under Article 75 of the Constitution for contravening Article 75, one conflict of interest, 76, financial probity, uh, 77, restriction of state officers, 78, two, dual citizenship of the Constitution, and lastly, Honorable Speaker, that the nominee were nominated in accordance with Section 72, F, G, H, and I of the Climate Change Act, number 11 of 2016. Mr. Speaker, sir, the three nominee, Amy Mwende Waita, John Kioli Kalua, and Professor George Odera Outa, demonstrated knowledge on topical issues, technical and administrative issues touching on climate change and have the requisite abilities, qualifications, and experience uh, to serve as members of the National Climate Change Council. However, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, Umra Omar did not demonstrate knowledge on tropical issues, technical and administrative issues touching on the indigenous knowledge contrary to Section 72H of the Climate Change Act 2016. Consequently, the nominee lacks the requisite abilities and experience to serve as representative of the marginalized community of the National Climate Change Council. Lastly, Honorable Speaker, is that I urge members to read comprehensively the Joint Committee Report of the National Assembly Departmental Committee on Environment, Forestry and Mining, and the, State, uh, the Senate Standing Committee on Lands, Environment, and Natural Resources in order to fully appreciate and enrich, and enrich the debate. I further urge members to adopt the recommendations and commit and of the committee as contained in the report. Honorable Speaker, just to highlight is that it is a joint committee between us and the Senate. The Senate will be discussing the same uh, in the uh, uh, plenary on this matter, Honorable Speaker. And it is true that uh, when the four nominees did appear before us, each was given an ample time, two hours, uh, we were there from 8 all the way to around 7, uh, actually 8 in the night. And Honorable Speaker, as, <coughs> as indicated to uh, that fact, is that all the, the, the three nominees, that is uh, Prof, uh, Amy Mwende Waita, uh, Mr. John Kioli, and Professor George Odera, did demonstrate knowledge of the climate change. And Honorable Speaker, climate change is is seen as if it is not being, it is actually the world, the currently, it is trending all over the world. And you, you can imagine, Honorable Speaker, that climate change, if it does, it's not handled properly. The situation that this country is, the situation that the whole world is currently, is the situation that will, and it is going to get worse, Honorable Speaker, if we are not able to address and get uh, members in the Climate Change Council who understands and can be, be able to bring uh, some meaningful change. And the three actually did tell us that actually climate change occurrences are man-made. It is the human that affects the environment. It is us who are destroying our environment to a point that these days you cannot be able to predict anything about the climate. 
And they told us that uh, if it is not addressed properly, Honorable Speaker, particularly the emissions uh, by the uh, in industrialized countries and uh, the, the big countries that we always talk about, then we, we, uh, we will end up suffering, Honorable Speaker. And one of the issues that uh, this country has excelled again very well, it is on matter of carbon credits. Honorable Speaker, we have planted so much trees. And that tree, do, it is the recipient of the emissions as they also give out uh, oxygen, Honorable Speaker. And being a recipient of the emissions by the industrialized world, then we are supposed as a country to be the, actually in Africa, we are the biggest earners or second biggest after Congo because of the trees and uh, the vegetation that we have. But the government does not benefit at all because we have two options where we have uh, the government can be able to be the biggest earners of the cre carbon credit, but at the moment, honorable speaker, we don't earn anything because that has been taken by individuals. And of course it is acceptable. Individuals could be able uh, to uh, encourage communities to be able to plant more trees so that they can be able to be earners of that carbon credit. But also the government needs to play a bigger role in earning the whatever is received from the carbon credit so that it can be able to reinvest the same amount into uh, 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 you know, checking the, uh, the, the climate and uh, of course handling some of the environmental issues that are, are, are happening in this, uh, in, this, uh, in this country. Honorable Speaker, the forests, and, and uh, we were pleased because some of these nominees when we did put across some of the questions, like for example, we did put a question about the 15 billion trees, and he said yes, uh, Professor Odera said very well. But at the same time, he did advise that please, as parliament, be uh, informed by science. Let us not just be making decisions here based on our hearts and our heads. We should allow science also to guide us in our decision making. And one of the issues that he did speak to, which was saying it's a good idea to have 15 billion trees, but do you know by planting 15 billion trees, then it means you have already covered half of your country. Again now, where will you be taking your people? That is a question that we need to ask. Secondly, he said, assuming at any one time we have attained our 15 billion trees coverage that we, are, we ambitiously want to achieve, all of a sudden, and as we are talking now, Honorable Speaker, almost half of our forest has been destroyed because of the forest fires. And these forest fires are not, sta sta they are started by the same human beings. Again, we'll become the biggest em emitters of the same thing that you're trying to, to avoid. Again, he was telling us we must, as we plant the 15 billion trees, we must put enough measures to be able to address, in case of forest fires, what is going to happen. And what are you going to, so that we can be, uh, Honorable Speaker, the President, the President is the, the Chair of the Climate Change Council. His deputy is his deputy chair. So you can imagine how that important is. And that is why uh, one of the nominees did not uh, 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 prove to us that he uh, they could be able to go along in that direction. Because, Honorable Speaker, I beg, uh, sorry, Honorable Speaker, with those uh, few remarks, I beg to move and call upon Honorable my Vice Chair, uh, Charles Cameron, to second. Charles Cameron, Honorable Charles Cameron, proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I stand to. Uh, Second, this motion, Mr. Speaker, has been said very well, as it has been said very well by, the, by the, my chair, that climate change is, is serious and is affecting us. What is going on in the entire republic? The punditry... Order, Honorable Lachi. Who are you the, consulting? The, order, order, Honorable Member. Honorable Lachi, who are you consulting loudly there? 
please. You may proceed. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Speaker. I was saying, Honorable Speaker, that the, the challenges that we are facing in this country at the moment, it is as a result of climate change. And I want to thank the members of this House for what they did in the year 2016 by coming up with this Act of Climate Change Act 2016, which has established this council so that we can see how we can mitigate the challenges of climate change. Because this is our future. This is our economy. It's affecting our economy. It's our, affect, affecting our generation to come. So, Mr. S Honorable Speaker, these committees, uh, these council members are really very relevant, and uh, they went through the right pro, uh, pro, pro, procedure. They went through the vetting. We followed the due process with the joint committee of the Senate. And uh, the report that we are giving out is a clear and fair report that each one got opportunity to express and to answer the questions, and we saw it. So, Honorable Speaker, I stand to second. Thank you. The Honorable Members, I now propose the question that taking into consideration the finding of the Joint Committee of the National Assembly Departmental Committee on Environment, Forestry, and Mining, and the Senate Standing Committee on Land, Environment, and Natural Resources, in its report on the vetting of nominees for the appointment as members of the National Climate Change Council laid on the table of the House on Tuesday, 14th, March 2023, and passed one to Article 132F of the Constitution, Section 74 of the Climate Change Act, Section 3 and 8 of the Public Appointments Parliamentary Approval Act 2011, and the Standing Orders 216 5F of the National Assembly, and the Senate Standing Order 2284 f a approves the appointment of the following persons as members of the National Climate Change Council. One, Ms. Emily Mwende Waita. Two, Mr. John Kioli Kalua, and three, Professor George Odera Outa. B, rejects the appointment of Ms. Umra Omar as a member of the National Climate Change Council. No, we, this being a, a special motion to approve nominees and having been told that the chairman of the council is the president himself. The vice is the deputy president. I will allow a few members to make their contributions on this. And therefore, number one on my list here is uh, Honorable Kibet Komingoi of Bureti. In his absence, and not being in the house, I move to Honorable Francis Gay of Sotik. The Honorable Members who are out of the house or who are not willing to speak on this, I would then advise that if you want to speak on this, press your intervention. So I'll go to interventions. And therefore, I want to call Honorable Kuria Kimani of Molo. Asante sana mustahiki speaker kwa kulipa muda huu wa kuchangia report hii ambayo imeandaliwa vilivyo na rafiki yangu na mbunge wa kaunti yetu ya Nakuru Mheshimiwa Gikaria. Mheshimiwa speaker huu mjadala ni wa, wa kupitisha wale wana chama wa, baro, wa, wa baraza la nchi la masuala la, la tambiachi ama ukitaka climate change. Mheshimiwa speaker Mambo haya ya tambiachi ni ambayo yanahusisha mambo ya unyevuanga, 
na ama ukitaka kwa kimombo humidity mambo ya kanie, kanie, kanieneo ya yanga, ya angahewa ukipenda atmospheric pre, pressure mambo ya upepo mambo ya usimbishaji ama ukitaka precip, precipitation na masuala mengine yanayoathiri mambo ya hewa mheshimiwa speaker tuko wakati ambapo katika nchi yetu ya Kenya mambo yamebadilika katika mahali ambapo natoka eneo bunge la Molo mheshimiwa speaker hatujawahi kukaa miezi minne bila kupata hata tone moja la mvua lakini tunashukuru Mwenyezi Mungu kwamba leo uh, asubuhi na jana usiku tumeweza kupata mvua miezi minne baada ya mara ya kwanza sisi kupata, kupata mvua na kwa hivyo mheshimiwa speaker haya mam, maswala ya tambiachi ama haya wamo ukitaka climate change ni mambo ambayo yaliweza ku, ku, kuzungumziwa kwanza pale Marekani na yule ambaye alikuwa uh, rais wa, wa, wa Marekani mheshimiwa um, Barack Obama na watu wengi walisema kwamba haya mambo yatambiachi basi ni, ni story tu ni, ni, ni mambo tu ambayo hawata, hawata kuja. lakini tunapoangazia kwamba yale mambo ambayo yamebadilika saa hizi mifugo mifugo yetu yanakufa kwa sababu ya kukosa um, um, uh, nyasi na, 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 na chakula uh, uh, kingine cha mifugo ni suluhisho kwamba ama ni, ni, ni sindikisho kwamba haya maswala sasa yako pamoja na sisi pia mheshimiwa speaker na shukuru kamati hili kamati hii kwa sababu ya kumkataa huyu uh, huyu mama uh, um, umra Omar na wakati nilikuwa na, na jaribu kuzungumza kuuliza hawa wanachama wa hii kamati ni kwa nini waliwe wanapendekeza wana tuwapitishe hawa Emily Mwenda Waita tumpitishe John Kioli Kalua na tumpitishe huyu professor George Ondera lakini tu, 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 tusiweze kumpitisha huyu wamenieleza ya kwamba kabisa hakuonekana kama alilewa mambo ya tambiachi hata kidogo na hata walipoulizwa mambo ya hali ya kifedha kwa sababu ndio uweze kuongoza baraza kama hili lazima ukue na uzoefu wa masuala ya uongozi uzoefu na ujuzi wa masuala ya kifedha uzoefu na, na ujuzi wa mambo ya, ya, ya masuala ya uongozi uh, huyu huyu mama mheshimiwa speaker hata yale makaratasi ambayo alisaili kuyaleta kutoka na, na, na zile shirika mbalimbali za serikali ambazo zinafaa kuchunguza uh, 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 kuchunguza wa Kenya basi hakuwa tayari na, 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 na yale makaratasi na hivyo kwamba hii itakuwa funzo kwa yale wale wote ambao wanakuja kuletwa kwamba katika uh, hii bunge hili ya kwamba sio kumaanisha ya kwamba kwamba jina lako limepeanwa ya kupitishwa kwa, kwa kamati yoyote ama kwa jukumu lolote katika nchi yetu ya Kenya ya kwamba bunge letu la 13 ni bunge ambalo litaweza ku, 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 kuangazia hao wa, wa, watu wote na kuangalia kama wale ambao wamehitimu basi tutaweza kupitisha katika hili bunge na wale ambao hawatakuwa wamehitimu hatuta sita kamwe kuhakikisha kwamba tumewarudisha kwa raia ili tuweze kutafuta wale wa Kenya ambao wako na ujuzi ambao unahitajika kufanya zile kazi ambazo wamepewa kuzifanya na kwa hayo na unga mkono kamati la eh, kamati hii ambayo inaongozwa na mheshimiwa Gikari Asante msaiki speaker uh, next is uh, the honorable Jessica Mbalu Kibwezi East Thank you Mr. Speaker for the opportunity. Mr. Speaker, I rise to support the report of the Joint Committee on the National Assembly, that is the Departmental Committee on Environment, Forestry and Mining, in the Senate Standing Committee on Land, Environment and the Natural Resources. Mr. Speaker, on onset, I must say that I am a member of the National Assembly Committee on the same and a member of the Joint Committee. I want to appreciate and thank my chairperson, the Honorable Gikaria, for the moving of the approval report of the nominees that were sent to us. Mr. Speaker, he has highlighted every procedure according to our standing order and the requirement. And Mr. Speaker, I must say the uh, recommendations are the recommendations of the committee. Mr. Speaker, I will start from being a lady. I am a member of parliament as a woman from Kibwezi's constituency serving my third term. 
Mr. Speaker, we really felt for one Madam Umra Omar, whom my chairperson really described on the issues why she was not able to be picked. I really cried for her to be given a chance, Mr. Speaker. But uh, the demonstration that she gave to us is that she did not understand very well on the issue of climate change. And Mr. Speaker, also she lacked interest on the subject matter. We tried to persuade that she's given time to put her things in place. Mr. Speaker, being a woman, it's not easy. Maybe she had issues of cooking for the babies and also serving issues uh, and the family. But however, being a woman does not mean that you don't take your work serious. Mr. Speaker, uh, Mr. John Kioli did very well, presentation of papers, as the uh, chair has said. He seemed and he also demonstrated in the interviews and also when we were interviewing them, of course, uh, that he understands the issues of a climate change. And as you know, the, how uh, the climate change is uh, affecting our country and our whole continent. Mr. Speaker, also a one lady who did also very well, and I was happy, is a Miss Emily Mwende Waita. She really demonstrated through her experience, through even communication and answering of questions to the committee, and we were all satisfied. Mr. Speaker, I want to say on the conclusion that uh, it was unanimous agreed by all the members of the Joint Committee, that is the National Assembly and the Senate, which is a committee that was chaired by both chairs and all the members, that uh, we approved the three. And uh, either, I don't know, we have given another member that is to replace, or maybe we allow, of course, that is not a recommendation, that is my feeling now. We also allow the being a woman, the Miss Umra Omar, now that we are working on the two third gender principle to, you know, come back again for the, uh, for, for the interview. And I request, because I know the chair is here and I know the appointee, the bodies that are appointing, because we needed four, the other one to be appointed to be a lady. Mr. Speaker, uh, on the issue of uh, the work that is needed on the climate change, the council. It is going to give us a lot of uh, answers to questions. In fact, some of the questions is how are we prepared as a country to ensure that we, you know, we, we, we can be within or we can ensure that our people are not uh, affected adversely by the climate change. And so these four council members are very important members who needed the necessary qualifications and so I want to be on record, I also been a lady, it was anonymous, agreed by all the members that the three members that have been said by, that is um, Emily Mwende Waita, Mr. John Kioli, and Mr. George Odera Uta be approved, and uh, Ms. Umra Omar not approved. I feel for her. And I also had ladies in our next meetings and when we are called, let us get our matters very serious. The Honorable Dindi Nyoro. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. And definitely I rise to support and give my comments. But first I was to co congratulate the committee and especially the chairman, the very knowledgeable chairman, Honorable Gekaria, for a very elaborate report. I've been going through the report and I can clearly see intense hours were put into the works to be able to generate this report. Mr. Speaker, as you ruled uh, uh, before, this matter is a very serious issue. And I thank you for giving members an opportunity to ventilate and to also contribute to this motion. Mr. Speaker, because National Climate Change Council is a council in a class of its own. Mr. Speaker, you know, previously we used to head universities where Chancellor was the president of Kenya. But in the current situation of the modern institutions, 
That is normal. The point I'm driving home is that it is very unlikely, it is very scarce that you see a president chairing anybody in Kenya, and especially a sectoral body. And therefore, this is just to show the kind of importance that we give to our climate and issues to do with climate, our natural resources in terms of sustainability, and any other associated agenda, Mr. Speaker. That the National Climate Change Council is being chaired by none other than His Excellency the President, and the Vice is his Deputy, Mr. Speaker, and that the Secretary is the Minister or the CS who is responsible for that docket. Mr. Speaker, this is to show that we appreciate the situation we are in as a country and as a group, which, Mr. Speaker, has a great room for improvement. Mr. Speaker, when we talk about climate, it goes together with every other associated natural resource, and especially forestry. And that is why, Mr. Speaker, even the chair uh, and this committee is the one responsible for those issues. Because, Mr. Speaker, even singularly looking at natural resources, sometimes we think only about mining and what is underneath. But, Mr. Speaker, looking at the quantifiable natural resources of countries like DRC, countries like the U.S., countries like, uh, like Russia, Mr. Speaker, you are able to see that the value of natural resources that, over, that is over, not just other, need, Mr. Speaker, quantifiably is, is, is monumental. Forestry, Mr. Speaker, provides a great asset to any country, and especially if it is uh, harvested in a sustainable manner. And Mr. Speaker, even in budgeting, if you look at the current BPS, we have taken cognizant of the importance that we should give to our environment, Mr. Speaker, by allocating enough resources. And also we are looking forward that even when uh, after the, uh, the, the uh, after now we advertise, Mr. Speaker, for people to be able to harvest mature trees, that you are going to be able to generate a lot of appropriations in aid, Mr. Speaker, from our natural resources, not in terms of just going into our forest, Mr. Speaker, to cut trees, but in terms of harvesting mature trees and consequently also repressing. Mr. Speaker, the current situation we are in as a country and as a globe is associated with the how we have treated our environment before. And Mr. Speaker, nature can be unforgiving, and in that regard, we need to do what we must at this age to safeguard our tomorrow. The current situation in terms of drought and famine, Mr. Speaker, is associated with how we treated our forest previously. And Mr. Speaker, therefore, going forward, we need to be a bit more meticulous, Mr. Speaker, on how we look after our environment. I've gone through the CVs of the nominees. We have the right men in the job, Mr. Speaker, and even for the nominee, who is actually my friend who never got a chance to go through uh, Honorable Umrah, that uh, there are, it's a chance to try even better opportunities. Because the committees do their work objectively. Maybe she can fit in somewhere else with her qualifications, Mr. Speaker. But I also want to applaud those who went through because they are thoroughly qualified for the position uh, to, to sit in the Council of our Climate. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I submit. The Honorable Joseph Emathe, Turkana Central. Honorable members, if you want to speak on this, you put your intervention. So I can see all of you on intervention. You may proceed, Honorable uh, Emathe. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Honorable Chair, for hon Honorable Speaker, for this opportunity as granted. I want to say with lots of gratitude that uh, the Chair for Environment, Forestry, and Mining has been able to provide us a clear picture and an elaborate report on what transpired during the vetting of the four nominees to the Climate Change Council. Honorable Speaker, much of importance is that uh, today and now, the issue of climate change is very important. And it's a bigger debate 
that is going all around the globe and people are discussing about the issue of climate change. Honorable Speaker, it is important to underscore the fact that our President, His Excellency, Honorable Dr. William Samoy Ruto, is the chair of the AU Climate Change uh, Committee. And here in Kenya, he is also the chair of this Climate Change Council. And uh, that gives us the impetus here as a country to understand that climate change is really picking a higher platform, a higher consideration. And so, when we are discussing about climate change, Honorable Speaker, it is important to note that really we are losing our biodiversity, we are losing our forests, we are, we are not getting enough rain as it was, the seas and the lakes are rising at an alarming rate. And uh, Honorable Chair, Honorable Speaker, it is important also to consider the fact that all of our cross government, the powers and the functions need to be integrated or mainstreamed for us to be able to achieve on this. Speaking to the report, Honorable, Honorable Speaker, the, the nominee who needs to be rejected is appointed or uh, nominated on the ground under Section 7, Subsection 2H of the Climate Change Act of 2016, and uh, is supposed to represent the marginalized communities given Article 260, Honorable Speaker. And uh, this shall remain. And I will also recommend that we get another lady who is conversant with this indigenous knowledge that is required as per the Act, and that we, the, the name is again brought of another lady who will be able to provide us with that requirement of indigenous knowledge. Honorable Speaker, this is a council that will attract a lot of funding. It is a council that will monitor, discuss, operationalize on the Climate Change Fund. This is, again, a council that will help us alleviate conditions of climate change and it's also a council that will help us be able to integrate, operationalize, and be able to, 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 to weigh on the effects of climate change as at now. And therefore, Honorable Speaker, it is important that we take it seriously, and I want to thank those who have already been approved, and that, Honorable Speaker, I submit and I support. Thank you. The Honorable Gertrude Mbeyu, County Women Rep, Kilifi. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I stand to support this report by the Environment Committee, Forest and Mining. As a speaker, I'm a member of this committee in the National Assembly. I agree and really congratulate my chair of the Environment Committee Mr. Speaker, with all the time they used, Mr. Speaker, I want it understood that the members of the National Assembly and so are the Senate and the committees are not members to rubber stamp. I uh, want to congratulate the three members who were selected to the council. Being a very sensitive and a council of its own, in this uh, regime, Mr. Speaker, I want to say as much as we would support ladies, we would always support those who qualify. I'm just wondering how my sister Umra documents landed into the committee when she did not have all the documents certified. 
should not have knowledge of environment. And I think uh, the executive now have understood that members of the parliament are not rubber stompers. We did what we were supposed to do. We selected the ones who are qualified, had the qualifications and the technical know-how, the skills on matters environment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Very well. The, hon the Honorable Ngongoyo Onesmas. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I rise, Mr. Speaker, also as a member of this committee. Uh, and I begin by thanking the ABLE Chair, together with the team, that um, we went ahead to do the vetting of these particular individuals. And Chair, from the onset, <coughs> I must say that, uh, like one member mentioned, the Climate Council is equivalent to the Security Council. They will make decisions for the country, for the continent, and even for the world on matters environment. It is a very sensitive council, and therefore anybody being nominated to this committee must show the committee, uh, and on behalf of the people of Kenya, the, uh, we, the members of parliament, that they are able to touch base with the issues of environment in a, matter, in a manner that is very clear. Chair, uh, we have a set of individuals who are very capable. One of them, Mr. Speaker, for instance, is a qualified lawyer. We have a serious issue with carbon, uh, uh, carbon credit in Kenya, where we've had faulty agreements with different uh, entities, so that, Mr. Speaker, you find that the locals are not benefiting. We had the issue recently, Mr. Speaker, in Kilifi, uh, on the issue of uh, the Boabab trees. Mr. Speaker, the Environment Council will come a long way to assisting the community to come up with agreements that will benefit the community. Mr. Speaker, this council that is headed by the president will be very key in ratifying decisions going forward on matters environment, reviewing decisions that have been made, Mr. Speaker, and making other decisions that will go forth to help this country on the issues of environment. Mr. Speaker, there are serious plans with the Kenya Kwanzaa government on the issue of planting trees, and not only planting, adapting trees, Mr. Speaker, raising funds with uh, other development partners, Therefore, Mr. Speaker, these are very key people uh, to moving forward the country on matters environment. On the unfortunate part, Mr. Speaker, of uh, the one candidate that has been rejected, the committee is very clear that this candidate, Mr. Speaker, did not satisfy some of the requirements of the law. This is a state office, being a council member. The member was still a member of a political party. They have, therefore, they disqualified themselves by being a member of a political party at a time when they have been nominated, Mr. Speaker, to hold on to a state office. Mr. Speaker, you must also show that you have knowledge on the position that you have been nominated. Uh, the parliamentary, uh, Public Parliamentary Approval Act, Mr. Speaker, gives the basics uh, of about 32 issues, Mr. Speaker, that you have to look into. Mr. Speaker, even on the issues of personal wealth declaration are issues that you must come. You must show your net worth, Mr. Speaker. When you cannot show clearly what you're worth, Mr. Speaker, and you're coming into a state office, then you limit the committee to be able to interrogate you in the right manner. But Mr. Speaker, as I finish this, I must say, the committee did a perfect job in the short time. And Mr. Speaker, we scrutinize these individuals in many diverse ways, and I'm very happy to be part of the people who are saying yes to individuals who will go and make decisions on behalf of our country on matters environment, which are very, very key. Uh, Mr. Speaker, with those very many remarks, I wish to support the report of the committee and urge honorable members, let us approve this individual so that they may kick off the good work of putting the country back to shape, the continent back to shape, and the country back to shape on making decisions that are environment friendly and that look at the future of our generation. With those very many remarks, Mr. Speaker, I support the report of our committee on environment. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Well spoken, the Honorable Geoffrey Ruku, bear a note. Honorable Ruku, you will be given uh, a mic from your place. Just go back. There's no crisis in the house. 
Please give Honorable Ruku a mic. Very well, proceed. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You know, uh, I'm a bit tall, so it's good for me to be using with my hair. I rise to put my wand on uh, <clears throat> climate change uh, council nominations. And Mr. Speaker, the council is well cut for the job ahead of them. Because for those who have been in the field of climate change, in terms of project development in this country, many project developers, Mr. Speaker, uh, on climate change project have been taken advantage of by international community or by investors who come in this country in the name of investing in climate change projects so that they can sell carbon credits to different companies in Europe and in also America. Mr. Speaker, we see this council is uh, uh, the chairman of the council is the end of the state or the president of the Republic of Kenya. That means it's an extremely serious council and it measures to the gravity of the issues to do with climate change. It is important to coordinate and synchronize all the activities of the Republic of Kenya, private and public, as far as climate change uh, is concerned, whether it is mitigations or adaptation. Mr. Speaker, there is huge amount of money uh, within this uh, space, within the finance, uh, or rather climate finance space. For this nation to take advantage of that, need a very competent, focused, qualified individual to sit in that council. I recommend, I commend the, uh, the committee led by Honorable K K K Kikaria on the job they have done, but also it is upon the individuals who we are passing as parliament they go and do a good job. One of the jobs which they have to do is to regulate the business of climate finance. Most of the climate finance which is coming to this country, it end up going back to the said investors. So there is a lot of work to do as far as regulations uh, pertaining climate change. Climate change act by itself cannot protect the investors, cannot protect the project developers of this nation properly without the accompanying uh, regulations, which can anger different articles of the climate change and clauses within the Climate Change Act. So there is some work to be done to ensure uh, projects, whether it is climate smart agriculture project, whether it is uh, agroforest project, water resources, management project, uh, whether it is uh, shrubs, like when we can talk about the Masai Mara ecosystem, which is a very premium, um, a very premium uh, uh, resource which we have in this country, and which this nation is, take, is not fully taken care of as far as climate change is concerned. So Mr. Speaker, I rise to support uh, the nominees, but also give uh, a broad view that there is too much work which needs to be done to take full advantage of climate finance as far as this country is concerned. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the Honorable Beatrice Kimei, Kericho County Women Representative. Okay, thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I was wondering if I have been forgotten, but thank you. And I rise to first appreciate and thank the chair and for the time that he took together with the members and I must confess that I'm a member of this committee. He led us quite well. And I want to thank the president for bringing us these nominees uh, the three of them whom we are to approve. And the unfortunate part is the rejection, 
of Omar and the fact that she is a woman, yet we are looking for the two-third gender. However, I want to say that matters climate change should be taken seriously. And for this, climate change is already a very urgent threat to millions of lives, and that is why we have to take it seriously. And uh, Mr. Speaker, the nominees who came, that is MS Emily, Mr. Kalua, and Professor George, they demonstrated knowledge of the, uh, they actually demonstrated that they have knowledge on matters, climate change. They were very focused and they answered the questions satisfactorily. All the questions that we managed to ask them, they answered to the best of their ability. And uh, these nominees, Mr. Speaker, from even their papers that is concerned of chapter six, we learned that these are people of integrity, ready to work, and even to bring a change, and to answer the many questions that are concerned with climate change. With this one, with this in, uh, in our minds, Mr. Speaker, climate change will actually attract a lot of funding. So when we ask some of these questions, how they will be and in charge of this, and how the many communities will actually be assisted to, uh, to cope, cope with the issues of climate change. They demonstrated that they are ready and equal to the task. So I must thank the president for bringing these nominees, and for Madam Omar, I pray that she gets another position that is equal to the task. Mr. Speaker, this is just a lesson to the many Kenyans that we have outside there, seeking for uh, appointments, seeking for nominations, seeking for employment in any form, that they should take their work seriously, and to know that when it comes to interviews and vetting, they should take it seriously and be prepared for the same and go for the positions that they know they are able to actually deliver to the people of Kenya. So, uh, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank the chair and all the members for the work that was put here. And this is just to also let the members of the public, these are Kenyans, to note that parliament is not a place to just wrap a stamp and just pass uh, the names, but this is a place of serious work, and people coming here should know that they have to be ready and to work for the people of Kenya. And uh, Mr. Speaker, I want to appreciate one more thing that uh, for this climate change to be capped, women and girls need to be supported and educated so that uh, in cases like uh, having energy saving GCOs would be important. Use of renewable energy is very important. And finally, Mr. Speaker, I must say that all the sectors of the economy in this country should work together to make sure that climate change is capped. Thank you so much. The Honorable Jackson Kosuke. Could we please give the microphone to Honorable Jackson Kosge at the back there? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity, and I wish to begin by, first of all, to congratulate the committee and the chairperson on this Committee of Environment, Forestry, and Mining um, on the thematic area of uh, climate change. Mr. Speaker, these great Kenyans who have been approved um, by the, recommended by the committee to be approved by this house this afternoon 
we wish to con congratulate them because of the knowledge already they have demonstrated on this field of climate change. I begin from the onset by supporting uh, the motion. Number one, among the things that are a threat to human existence is climate change. And the committee running this particular council must have the knowledge and capacity and because they enjoy the support of the national top leadership in Kenya, as well as the international concern. Mr. Speaker, uh, effect on our environment due to temperatures that are changing and weather patterns. Sometimes scientists are telling us that the causes, some of the causes are natural due to variation in what they call the solar cycle. But of great importance, and why we have a national council, because nobody can manage the natural part, but we can, natural, we can manage the human drivers. Since 1800, due to industrial revolution, human activities have been the main drivers in the climate change, uh, due to primarily the burning of fossils, as they say, which includes so many, it can be encompassed. This is human. The destruction of environment by felling trees and interfering with our ecosystem, it requires great knowledge and intervention by humans. Because this has come timely, Mr. Speaker, as a country, it is so important that we pay attention as to who is a member uh, to this particular council. And I wish to thank the committee for doing a thorough job, and they have given to this house how they did it, and that they followed the law. Kenya should therefore heed, because I can't belabor to repeat what my other speakers have exploited on, but I want to draw the attention of the House to the recommendation made by the Chair concerning exploitation of our natural resources underneath. We have so much mineral deposits in this country, Mr. Speaker, that if exploited, because it touches on mining and even protection of our forestry, that we need uh, to have a very serious attention uh, to the mining industry in this country, that we don't leave it to the multinationals who have come to ask for licenses to exploit our natural resources. I think, Mr. Speaker, this House should pay attention to that because it adds more in our GDP and in the economy of our country. I beg to support uh, the motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honorable Pauline Lengurus, County Women Representative, Samburu. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this opportunity to support the motion on the floor of this house. Uh, Mr. Speaker, let me first congratulate the committee and the chair for the comprehensive report they have given us, and they have really demonstrated that they have done a thorough and good job as a committee uh, to recommend for the council members uh, that will represent this country on climate change. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we all understand that uh, this country is really going through uh, serious effects of climate change, and um, we are really suffering because of the effects that we are experiencing nowadays. We have uh, experienced no rains in this country for a long period. Uh, in some regions of this country, we have gone for a period of four years without rains. In some regions, there was also lack of uh, um, pasture for the livestock. Therefore, we have lost uh, the source of livelihoods for most of the pastoralist communities. There's also severe temperatures in some parts of this country due to the effects of climate change. 
And uh, I want also to congratulate the, the committee for the good work they have done in trying to, to look at the capacity of the members who have been recommended to be the council members. Because we really need a lot of experience and a lot of support for the people who are going to guide the ministry, the people who are going to advise the president, and who are going to advise this country generally in terms of how to address the effects of climate change. Uh, we have seen that the, the chair has really demonstrated on the capacity of the members they have recommended, uh, their profession, and uh, the one who has been declined is, is really, they have really shown us it, they have declined the appointment because of the experiences and also the expertise. But, uh, and since the, the, the lady was representing the marginalized communities of this country, I would request the, com the committee that the replacement of the lady should be done uh, as, as earlier prescribed, so that because I'm sure we are going to get other ladies from the marginalized communities who will, be, who will maybe have the experience and the expertise that we are looking at. So please kindly take our recommendations and ensure that the lady who is going to be appointed to replace the one that we have declined is going to come from a pastoralist community because she was to represent the interests of the pastoralist community. Otherwise, I support and I thank the committee for the good work they have done. They have really shown us the, the professionalism they have shown and also the, 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 the experiences and the procedures following the law on how to arrive at the three nominees. And uh, Mr. Speaker, I support the, the report of the committee. Thank you. The Honorable Titus Lote Kacheliba. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to stand as a member of this committee to actually congratulate my chairman, my vice chairman, and the committee members for the good work that uh, was done in vetting these members. I also want to thank His Excellency the President, who is the chairman of this council, for having actually abided to the provision of the Climate Change Act 2016 and, appoint and provided the names to be vetted. I think the members did a good job, not only to look at the papers that these people are actually carrying, but also to look at their spirit, dissect into their souls to understand the kind of change that they can bring to the Cl Climate Change Council. Uh, speaker, I think I cannot belabor on what many people have said in terms of this council. I think it stands at a very unique mm. position in this country and most particularly at this time of the year when we are actually seeing the effects of climate change. Everybody is actually relieved this particular time when we hear that there are rains coming across. This has never been the case before. People are actually looking at their weather forecast People are waiting to look at the newspapers. People are calling to be told there is rain in Kakamega. There is rain in Kitale. And people are celebrating in Nairobi. That tells you that the effects of climate change is rife and it is here with us. I think we looked through the hearts of these people and we actually produced the people that we think can be able to do justice to climate change. Uh, Mr. Speaker, you actually cannot. Today we are looking at the budgets of this country. And one thing that people have not noticed is that our resources, our revenues are actually dwindling. And there is a big, big opportunity in what we call the carbon credit. In this country, we are told, Kenya is one of the most ranking countries in terms of the income that are coming from the carbon credits. This is where developing con developed countries are actually trading their carbon uh, through countries such as Kenya to be able to continue producing and actually buying the kind of carbon that we're sinking with our trees and our environment. Mr. Speaker, I think if this country has to make revenues, we need to actually strengthen this council and give the kind of people that we have given today. And I think, and I strongly believe, if this council is well managed, Mr. Speaker, the revenues that are going to go into this country and change the environment of this country and change the economies of this country will come from this council. So Mr. Speaker, I will stand to support 
and to thank everybody that has actually participated in giving us these members. Lastly, Mr. Speaker, the Constitution, Article 260, talks about the marginalized, and particularly I looked at the nomadic persons, whether settled or not settled. And the member that was not taken, the member was, that was dropped, actually was representing this cadre of people. You can already hear, Mr. Speaker, that the Cabinet Secretary for Interior has zoned this country. There are places that are zoned because they are considered as dangerous zones, because this is the areas where the nomadic pastoralists are living. And these people have actually been marginalized by everything, and including now, when they are being zoned, they are actually gotten out of their environments. I will urge the President that let the next person that is going to be nominated in this category come from these people that have been historically been marginalized because some of them are competent enough but they do not get the opportunities that will have been. Mr. Speaker, I do not want to say that I am celebrating the non-appointment of the member, but I'm saying that there is another opportunity to get a member from these particular communities. And I will think this particular time we go specifically to the people that are coming from these places. A place like Kachaliba, for example, I've got good ladies that are qualified that can also go into this particular commission. And I want that taken into consideration. I stand to support. Thank you. Uh, the Honorable Fatuma Jehau, County MP Wajir. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, for giving me this opportunity to contribute on this uh, climate change. And I would like to applaud the chairman for doing a good job. But uh, I rise to actually ask a question regarding this member who has been rejected by the committee. Through the speaker, to, from this report, Madam Umra Omar, from where I sit, she represents the people from the pastoralist community. And uh, I've just gone through the report, and uh, we understand, and we are told that she is not qualified. I just want to ask, Mr. Speaker, this uh, Omar uh, has a very good papers. From the report, Omar has Masters of Arts, Social Justice and Intercultural Relations. She also has bachelor's of arts degree uh, psychology. She, on the other hand, when I go to the experience, Omar has a very good experience. Mr. Speaker, she, Omar is the founder and the board chair of Safari Doctors Lamu. I am not known to Omar, but I'm just asking, she is representing the many people from ourselves, just like the honorable member had said. Rejecting Omar feels like rejecting the pastoral communities. Uh, yes, uh, what is out of order, honorable member? Honorable Jao, you may take your seat. You'll come back later. Just take your seat. Uh, Mr. Speaker, is it in order for the honorable member to insinuate that the committee did not do its work while she has attested that she doesn't really meet the qualification in regard to what is at hand? We are discussing matters climate change. It's not about regionalism. It's not about pastoralism. It's not about tribe. The lady is a is an expert in arts and culture, has nothing to do with science and climate change. So is she really in order to insinuate that the committee did not do thorough work while it is about qualification? There are many pastoralists who fit the same uh, position. I don't feel it's good to at least put liability on the committee, Mr. Speaker. Very well, but I think uh, Honorable Fatma Jao is putting her position very clearly. Could we listen to her? You may proceed, Honorable Fatma. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, well noted from uh, the member from Ojia North. 
I'm actually his county MP. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I am asking all those questions I asked on behalf of the women from the Asal communities. Just rejecting uh, Omar and saying he's not qualified is not enough. Uh, we would like the chair to maybe clarify more on that. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Uh, descending voices are allowed. And I want the committee chair to just take notes because we'll have a right of reply. Next is Honorable Dorothy Ik Ikiara. The next mic. Too short. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this opportunity to add my voice on this very, very important uh, uh, motion. Mr. Speaker, first, let me take this opportunity to congratulate this committee on environment, forestry, mining, and in particular thank the chair and his entire team for the considerations that they have made. Mr. Speaker, climate change is no longer a theory as people thought. It is now a natural phenomenon that has caused havoc across the globe. And Mr. Speaker, sir, when we first heard of climate change and the global warming, we thought it was a fallacy. But as we speak today, every person in this country and in the world at large has felt the effects of climate change. Mr. Speaker, it is for that reason that I stand to in particular say a very big congratulations to His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, who is the Chair of the National, of National Climate Change Council, sorry, and his deputy too. Because, Mr. Speaker, I know many a times we do things on paper, we come up with very good resolutions, we pick the best people who are knowledgeable, highly qualified in an area, but we don't actualize, Mr. Speaker, what we put on paper. Mr. Speaker, I'm quite aware now the President is very passionate about the bottom-up economy, and this is one of the premises on which the Kenya Kwanzaa government was formed. And the president himself has undertaken to start planting trees and urging people to plant trees because the effects of climate change are now being felt across the country. Mr. Speaker, we know that there is famine everywhere. Four years, some areas, there is no rain. And the main reason is because we did cut our trees, sometimes knowingly destroying our forests. And Mr. Speaker, this is the more reason now why I'm supporting these nominees. The three nominees who have been vetted, who have been scrutinized, and who have qualified to serve in this council. And Mr. Speaker, let me allay the fears of a member who is uh, saying one who is not qualified, and I support the members who are saying let that person be replaced by another one from the marginalized area, simply because she is not fit for this council, but she can fit in another area with the qualifications that she has. Mr. Speaker, sir, I want to say our forests are a main source of revenue. I am one person who comes from the Mount Kenya area. I know 
when the trees were being harvested, our youths who are today languishing in poverty, the youth, Mr. Speaker, who are spent their days drinking day in, day out, they were very busy because when trees are being harvested, it is a beehive of activity. Mr. Speaker, I'm supporting these individuals who are very knowledgeable in this area so that when this economic activity resumes, Mr. Speaker, it will be to the benefit of this country economically and it will also be a source of wealth for the very many young Kenyans because old people don't go to the forest to have trees. It is normally the youth who go there. Mr. Speaker, sir, I want to end my speech by first remembering very passionately The Honorable Michael Muchira, Old Yorok. You have had your bite. Let's hear from Honorable Michael Muchira. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this opportunity to support the motion for consideration of the nominee for appointment of the member, members of the National Climate Council. And uh, first of all, to congratulate the committee for the good job that they have done. I've gone through the report, Mr. Speaker, and uh, this appointment of an important council comes immediately after the summit that was held in uh, Egypt earlier this year that came with a lot of uh, resolutions that needs to be implemented by each member state. Mr. Speaker, we know the importance of this council in this country. Mr. Speaker, all of us now have experienced the uh, negative effect of the climate change. Uh, right now, we are all celebrating the few drops of rains that uh, have been experienced in uh, most parts of this country. And we continue praying, Mr. Speaker, that uh, the rains continues. But we know, Mr. Speaker, uh, continuing to pray without doing anything may have retro effect. And therefore, we need to take action, Mr. Speaker, as a country, and ensure that we come up with measures that will ensure that we mitigate the negative effect of the climate change. Mr. Speaker, this important council will help in mainstreaming the climate change functions between the county, uh, the national government and the county government. And Mr. Speaker, too, this council will help in uh, implementation of the National Climate Change Action Plan. Uh, and this action plan, Mr. Speaker, is in line with the Vision 2030 of this country, that, uh, and, uh, and that which is a, a blueprint for development of this country, and also ensuring that we have clean and sustainable environment, Mr. Speaker, and ensuring that we confront the climate crisis that we're experiencing to mitigate again its drought, drought and uh, and uh, food shortage, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, we all know that the president has uh, expressed himself in terms of where we want to go in terms of the forest cover in this country. And his vision of ensuring that we plant 15 billion trees by year 2032. And this council, Mr. Speaker, has to ensure that this pronouncement by the president or directive by the president is realized and implemented on a yearly basis to ensure that by the time we reach year 2032, we have a forest cover of over 20%. Mr. Speaker, on the rejection of, of the nominee, uh, Ms. Umra Omar, uh, this is an indication or, uh, that uh, parliament is not a rubber stamp or a conveyor belt. If your name is forwarded for vetting, you have to prepare yourself. You have to prepare yourself, Mr. Speaker. Otherwise, if you just come and uh, think that you can take parliament or a committee for granted, you are in for a rude shock. So, Mr. Speaker, I support 
uh, I support the nomination of the three members and the, of the three members and rejection of that member. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable, Honorable Muchira, what are the reasons for the rejection? Mr. Speaker, I, I listened carefully to the, <laughs> to the chairman when he was presenting, and he clearly stated, number one, he was, he did not, the member did not have a grasp of the climate issues when he, she was asked questions. And number two, man, uh, Mr. Speaker, he was still a member of a political party by the time he was appearing in the committee. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much, Honorable Ibrahim Sane, the MP for Jia North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I've read the report and uh, I entirely agree with the proposal and the nomination of the members to the Council, Climate Change Council. What is of importance, Mr. Speaker, climate change is never natural. Climate change is artificially induced. It originates from what we do to Mother Nature. It is entirely the results of anthropogenic activities. And whenever we distort the equilibrium of nature, nature has its own way of also come revenging and attacking us back. We have been so adverse to nature. We have been deforestating, cutting trees, releasing carbon monoxide to our stratosphere. And the result is what is at hand today affecting everybody. Mr. Speaker, climate change affects all facets of the society, from food security, diseases, insecurity. Actually, climate change can be termed to be the mother of all evil and must be fought from all fronts. Mr. Speaker, it's clear that what used to be a temporal, uh, uh, I mean, diseases that were common to some ecological zones are available everywhere today. You must have heard recently, we have new variants of mosquitoes who are hard to manage and resistant to treatment. That is the, really the effect of climate change that was with us. Some 20, 30, 40 years ago, people felt that climate change only affected assals and dry areas. Today it is in Mount Kenya, what we used to call the White Highland. It is everywhere. It is global. And I think time has come that we deal with it squarely and we mainstream climate change in all aspects of our, government, our governance. Mr. Speaker, I have gone through the Equalization Fund and how it was distributed. It is manifest that every region is trying to qualify as an asset. And it is genuine in my view, because climate change has reduced every region to be classified so. Otherwise, it would have been only for northern Kenya. Mr. Speaker, before I dwell on the effects of climate change, even within our laws, I think it is time to synchronize our laws. We have various aspects of climate change in various statutes. If you look at the Agriculture Act, there's a casual mention of climate change. There is the very comprehensive Climate Change Act. There is the Water Act. And there is the MCA as it is amended act, which also talks on climate change. Not forgetting that NEMA is the focal point, focal office for United Nations climate change. I think we need to relook on our legislation and harmonize them so that we can, ha we can deal with climate change effectively and have one orderly legal uh, system in our statutes. That bes uh, besides that, climate change has affected livelihoods, more so in Assal. The rangelands is the biggest sequester, or rather the sink of carbon monoxide, which is the culprit of climate change. We must deal with managing our rangelands. We must control how pastoralists keep livestock. It should no longer be for prestige. It should be economic driven, Mr. Speaker. I can see time is up. I could say water harvesting should be another thing. Soon we will be having climate change refugees. Initially, 
We used to have refugees as a result of insecurity and wars. Now, we will be inundated, flooded with climate change refugees. And the earlier we deal with it, the better. Thanks, and I, I support Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much, Honorable John Waluke. And, and, and John, uh, this is an approval, an approval uh, debate where some people are proposed for appointment, others are rejected. So don't tell us much about climate change and those other issues. Talk to the qualifications of these people or otherwise. More so the rejected person. I want to hear more why we are rejecting one Kenyan and, and, and approving others. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, uh, for giving me chance also to support uh, this uh, report of uh, climate change, uh, forestry, and mining. Mr. Speaker, this country has really changed and it has uh, really been affected uh, because of climate change, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as we cry every day about climate change, Mr. Speaker, when you pass up there in the plain, people are still cutting trees, people are still burning charcoal, Mr. Speaker, and action should be taken against the forest, forest officers. Mr. Speaker, I think they are the ones who are causing these big problems. Mr. Speaker, the climate change as we speak, it is a very serious issue, Mr. Speaker, for this country and the world as a whole. Many areas, like where we come from, we used to have rain from January, but up to date, there's no rain because uh, of cutting trees, like the Mount uh, Elgon, where we, we neighbor. Mr. Speaker, there are no trees. People are panning forests because they want to be given land. They think that they can be given the forest can be declared uh, for human so that they are given uh, land, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we must be involved, all of us, as people of this country. Like during Moi's time, Mr. Speaker, Moi used to say that you cut one tree, you plant ten. But since then, we have been cutting trees without replacing, without planting. President Moy used to get involved himself a day for planting trees, a day for uh, stopping uh, erosion in the parts of the, the country, Mr. Speaker. And uh, I'm happy that uh, President uh, Ruto, William Ruto now, because he was a student of uh, President Moy, uh, I want to thank him for taking initiative as the chair of the Climate uh, uh, Council of the Climate Change, Mr. Speaker, with, together with his deputy. We want him also to get involved. Moi used to say that he was a giraffe. He used to see far. We want the, our president also to, where he sits, to see far like a giraffe, like what is initiating now, Mr. Speaker. And if all Kenyans get concerned and, uh, and uh, get involved to plant trees, Mr. Speaker, I'm sure in another two, three years, uh, we will be through by changing the climate back to where it was, Mr. Speaker. With the candidate who was rejected, uh, uh, Honorable Speaker, she has papers, but she is not a scientist. And that is why when I talk to the chair, Mr. Kikalia, Honorable Kikalia, that is what he, the committee 
uh, uh, decided because her papers read different, she's an artist, and they wanted a scientist. So they get another woman from elsewhere, not, not necessary that she comes from a patrolist uh, area, but uh, the woman can come from anywhere uh, from this country, Madam Speaker, because we are bringing in uh, things, some, uh, it's like tribalism. Let, let us not say that uh, if you are a patrolist, uh, you must replace with a patrolist. No. A Kenyan from anywhere can can do the job, so long as he or she has the papers. And because she was a woman, uh, they get a woman from anywhere, be it Nyanza, be it Coast, be it Western, be it anywhere, even Nakuru. Or yeah, uh, this is the MP4. Yes, very not. Better not. You resemble your brother from somewhere in Guziland. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I rise on point of order 95. The members have exhausted uh, the issue on uh, Climate Change Council. I think it's the right time, Mr. Speaker, to call the mover to reply. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I, I will uh, rule on that after he concludes. Are he concluded? Yeah, are you concluded? Yes, MP4. Barry, have you looked at uh, standing order number 95? Speaker. You see, it says. Uh, is it 95 or 96? 95. It says that um, beyond your requesting for the mover to reply, what it says is that, and unless the speaker is of the opinion that such a motion is an abuse of the proceedings of the House or an infringement of the rights of the members, the question that the mover be now called upon to reply shall be put forthwith. So there is some discretion in the speaker there to make determination on those two grounds. And so I will not uh, put the question as to why the mover, mover, as to whether the mover should reply, because looking at the request here, there is still quite some interest. Allow the members to contribute. Who wanted to go next, Honorable Julius uh, Ruto? Do we have more particularly members of the committee who have not spoken? Because we want to hear members of the committee, particularly on that issue of rejection. Okay. So that uh, the, the nation is duly briefed. But Honorable Julius Ruto, to pro proceed. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Speaker, for allowing me this opportunity to also put my point on the approval of the said committee uh, council, so that the council members here. And uh, first of all, allow me to take this opportunity to congratulate the committee of the National Assembly and the committee of the Senate jointly who undertook uh, the exercise of vetting the said council. And as we talk today, the members have been read out to this honorable house. And as a procedure, you've allowed us as members to be able to make some few comments on the same. From the list, Mr. Speaker, you could really appreciate that the persons who have been identified, who have been vetted, and who have been recommended for approval to this council are people of eminence. One said, Mr. Kalua, whom we know him for quite some time. He's been so passionate about matters of environment, climate change. In our daily papers, he's been a columnist, trying to discuss a lot about uh, sensitizing our population on the aspect of the importance of cutting, safeguarding our environment, protecting our climate uh, situation, and enhancing activities that are going to mitigate the challenges of climate. Mr. Speaker, this council has come at the time that the whole world is facing serious challenges to do with climate change. We are now experiencing a very serious drought that is affecting the entire 
part of country, Kenya, and even the whole world. For the first time in the history of Kenya, almost every part of Kenya have been crying for water and for food. Unlike there before the preceding years, where we only knew there are some areas which are affected by the arid situation and the desert conditions. But the other part of the country, Kenya now, are also facing the same challenges. And all of these are caused by the change in patterns of rains, patterns of uh, winds, the sun, and this one tells us that things are no more same and normal as it used to be. That one, it indicates that something somewhere is not right. And the scholars, the researchers, are bringing this to our attention. That look at this. The current human activities in the world, especially the desired industrialization, is on the other side protecting, and I mean, uh, on the other side causing a negative impact to our climate. And therefore, the same human beings who are hazard now have to come to a discussion to ensure that we are able to bring back the image of this country, the image, the desired condition and situation and environment of human life. So us to be able to live a generation in future that are going to succeed this nation, unlike how it is as now. This council, Mr. Speaker, is very important because it's at this council that policies and legislation are going to be proposed that are going to guide well on the future attention of the uh, mitigation measures that we need to undertake, put by national government and by county government and every other agency that are geared to ensure that we have a good environment, a place, a home for human life, a home for animals, a home for living things. So this council, Mr. Speaker, have got enormous activity. And therefore, their competence and their knowledge is paramount that we should have people who really understand, who really are more acquainted, who really are passionate about the issues of environment. From the presentation of the chairman of the committee, the committee whom we know they are carrying enormous role of the function of this house during their vetting, they were, they were able to scrutinize each and every candidate who had been nominated to this particular council. And they were able to tell those candidates whom they have given us names that they are ready to be approved. And for one, Ms. Omar, uh, Umrah Omar, who was rejected, the basic background, I mean, ground of rejection was very simple, competence and the knowledge about the environment. Because we need these people who will be able to assist us to steer this nation to the right direction. We need people who will understand to articulate, to discharge, to discuss, both within and without. Remember, this particular council will also have a role to ensure what they resource decisions they are going to make. They resource well the aspect and the steps that we are going to take as a country, Kenya. Because the budget we have at the moment is so shrinked in the sense that we are not going to address all the needs at the go. And therefore, we Honorable Gishim Mugidinji, the MP for Gichu. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to support the motion by the committee led by Honorable Gikaria. And Mr. Speaker, let me say that the Climate Change Act uh, places, which, which was passed by this parliament in 2016, places the council as one of the very, very important organs in this country, whereby it is one among the few that are usually led by the president and deputized by his excellence, the deputy president. And the importance of this council is because it will be the advisor to the president and the deputy president, because they may have knowledge on some environmental matters, but they do not know everything. So they require technical, competent people to advise them. And when the Committee of uh, Environment retreated to consider the nominees, and which is an extension of parliament, 
the committee also has a membership of about 15 members. And when they make a resolution, I believe even the members make a vote at the committee level. So they must have considered, I'm persuaded, because I was not in the vetting, I, I, I'm not a member of the committee, but owing to the presentation that has been made by the chair and supported by, by the vice chair, Mr. Speaker, I'm persuaded that the committee considered all the relevant uh, issues in respect of the nominees to come up with this report. And uh, let me not belabor, because he's, he's already presented, I listened very keenly, but that the nominee who was rejected or is proposed to be rejected by the committee uh, does not mean that he's not learn the, the, the committee is not, the, the member is not learned. She has papers, she is learned, she is knowledgeable, but on other areas, but not on environmental matters. So, Mr. Speaker, then I have no reason not to support this committee and say probably the appointing authority could look into an area that this person can uh, properly fit in the service of this nation because a rejection of a nomination on the basis of qualification does not mean that that person cannot be able to serve in any other capacity. So I believe uh, in the wisdom of the appointing authority, they will find some space and place for this person to serve in this nation and probably have a replacement if it was a position that was reserved for, for the minorities to find another suitable person who is knowledgeable in this technical area of uh, climate change and uh, fill in that remaining vacant position. Mr. Speaker, as this committee, if it is approved by this parliament, or let me say when it is approved, because it's a matter of when, because I can see all 99.9% uh, uh, .9 of the members are in support, I would like them and through the follow-up of the committee to follow up for Kenyans on the issues of the carbon pricing. Kenyans might be swindled or being uh, uh, cheated by foreigners in this country because we do not have enough knowledge of carbon pricing which will make us retain the environment that we have, the tree cover that we have, and people may also continue earning out of them. So this is an area, a gray area, that Kenyans might be losing to foreigners, and they need to interrogate the ministry in depth so that they can come up with a policy on how Kenyans can be able to benefit from carbon credit in this country. I support Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Honorable Fatuma Masito, Member of Parliament for Kwale. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir, for giving me this opportunity. And uh, also, I'm a member of this committee, climate change, em environment, climate change, and mining. I was also in the vetting of this nominee. Also congratulate my chairman, my vice, and my fellow members of the committee. I want this house to understand that matters climate change this time round are very sensitive, and the members sat down with uh, my sister Umu Omar, and actually she's a learned fellow, but she doesn't qualify for this position in matters environment and climate change. I would like to tell Umu Omar, there's always next time, she can try other fields, but not this one, she is not fit for this one. And also inform this house that we also have uh, marginalized communities in Kuala County. We have the Makonde. We have the Wamasa from Kuala County. Also, we have very learned women there who can fit for this position. So I urge members, let us not just uh, have an eye on the northern part of Kenya. We have so many areas in this country who are also marginalized people. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
and I support this report. Thank you. Um, Honorable Pauline Lenguris, you want to speak to this? You've already spoken. And Honorable Joseph Ruku had spoken. Honorable Charles Cameron has, has spoken. Uh, the Honorable Beatrice Elachi, the Member of Parliament for the Great North, you want to speak to this? Yeah, please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I also rise to support uh, this report. Mr. Speaker, knowing very well that just last year is when we, fin we finished COP27 that was in Egypt, talking about climate change. And just a few days ago, Mr. Speaker, uh, Malawi and Mozambique were hit by the Freddy cyclone that has killed 200 people. Therefore, as I thank the chairman uh, of the committee in indeed uh, just ensuring that we need to now have a team of expertise who can assist the country and really look at what uh, we agreed in Egypt and how we agreed that we will follow the bilaterals and not just the bilaterals but our own domestic ways of ensuring climate change is uh, a subject that we need all of us in this country looking at our forests looking at the heat waves that we've had lack of rain and right now now the rain that is coming into the western side that is uh, with hailstones and we need to really sit as a country and examine ourselves that uh, and remember Wangare Mathai when she kept on saying that be a hummingbird that can save a country and this is what we are saying that these nominees are going to take a responsibility to support uh, the government to ensure that they are able to be advised accordingly. What do we need to do? How are we going to survive with the different challenges that we are facing, having had a very long drought that we have, and now very soon maybe going to face very heavy rains that will be with floods? What happens to the country? And therefore, Mr. Speaker, even as we agree, I'm always a champion of women, and I know I've listened to my sisters who are in the committee, and they have said the reasons why uh, we are rejecting one of the nominees. But I just want to tell also women, it is important to prepare. Prepare when you're going for any of these government appointees. Do not assume that uh, maybe you know someone that things will just work for you. And I want to thank the committee, and I know there are very many women who understand climate change, and I'm hoping that uh, the president will ensure we get another woman who will join in. But then, there's also another uh, thing that challenges us, that sometimes as Kenyans, we prepare so well when we are going for committees, Mr. Speaker. Then we will perform, and after performing, now when it comes to implementation, again, you get so surprised that the people you thought they were best performers, they don't perform. And, and it is something we have to also look at in this house, Mr. Speaker, that let us not just look at people and assume, but let us ensure that yes, they have gotten, but they must go now and implement. And the biggest challenge in our country is implementation. So I am praying, and I know, Chairman, you will follow up. You will be strict to the team that indeed this is a challenge in our country, and we must look at it all of us, and we must sit on a table and assist our young people to understand. I know in Nairobi, we are talking about looking at the Nairobi River, we are talking about so many things, but more importantly, we must create awareness for young people to understand that indeed climate change is here and it is going to change our lives because many things that we took for granted are now going to be things of the past. You realize during COVID time, we had to buy oxygen. Yet we have been joking with oxygen that God gives us and we think that's the best. So going forward, Chairman, with your committee, we want to thank you. And even after the recruitments that we have seen of the forestry guys, we are hoping that every constituency has been taken care of. And going forward, we just say thank you for this and we support. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mm. Honorable Deco M. Dalo, MP for Garissa Township. 
Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, uh, for giving me this opportunity uh, to contribute to this motion uh, as presented, uh, the report presented by our colleagues and the Departmental Committee of Environment and Forestry. Mr. Speaker, uh, the importance of this council cannot be overemphasized by virtue of the fact that the chairman of the council is the president of the republic and his deputy as the vice chair of the council. Mr. Speaker, on the, I want to take this opportunity also to thank the members of the committee for the good job they have done. Uh, it is very evident uh, by the fact that they spent a lot of time. One also, they have demonstrated the fact that they are not just a rubber stamp and they will not be used to, to clear anybody that is presented by any office. Uh, secondly, uh, by the fact that the members of the committee of, uh, have uh, actually stood on the floor of the House to defend their report, unlike the other committees where we have only the chairman or the vice chairman uh, presenting the report and supporting it. So I want to congratulate them for the good work they have done. The seriousness of, of this matter, uh, climate change, the impact, the effects, is very evident in our country. Uh, the problems that we are facing as a result of the drought uh, can always be associated with what is happening uh, to our country. So we expect uh, the, com the council members uh, to be of uh, top-notch uh, members uh, who will be able to coordinate all the other activities uh, of uh, certain groups, uh, donor agencies who are supporting, uh, uh, supporting uh, organizations uh, on issues uh, mitigating uh, climate change and environment. Uh, as you know, uh, it's a policy for the government to plant 15, 000, uh, 15 billion trees in the next 10 years, and we expect uh, this council to play a, a lead role uh, in ensuring that we achieve those targets. Mr. Speaker, we expect them uh, as a council uh, to, uh, to resource for resource mobilization you are aware of the fact that uh, we have so many partners, developing countries who are willing uh, to support these initiatives. So we expect them to not to depend only on uh, resources from the national government or from the exchequer. So for me, uh, as you are aware also, Mr. Speaker, we need them to protect what we have as forests in this country. Uh, we have been told in the past, during the last uh, election, while campaigning that there was a plan by the leadership of the, the past leadership uh, to, more, uh, to, uh, to take over the forest, uh, national forests and register them as their personal uh, lands so that they earn carbon credits from, uh, uh, from countries that are buying uh, these carbon credits. So, Mr. Speaker, I stand to support the motion as it is. Thank you. Thank you, the Honorable Joshua Mwali, the MP for Masinga. Uh, thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I stand here because having been persuaded by the chair that I drop my amendment, but I still reject the report of the committee because of one ma uh, Madam Omar Omra Omar who after reading our credentials are very amazing a very learned woman she holds a master's of arts in social justice in the cultural relations from the World Learning Institute, USA, a Bachelor of Arts degree in Neuroscience Psychology from Abilene, USA, and another Bachelor of Arts of Social Science from University of Buenos Aires, Argentina. While this is an appointment as a council member is not an in, in intake and does not need a qualification to be admitted in 
a university. It is whereby you bring your aids together. Some have the know-how, others don't have the know-how. But being a very learned lady, she, she can be able to grasp all those climate changes and even do a research as quickly as possible to be able to be in the equal, equal standard with the others. Because surely, for one to be denied because uh, she has no experience in climate change, and this is a committee, I don't think this is the right way. Because we have seen so many people that we have approved, they are not even, they are not even qualified in those areas. Which, and they have which, done very which well. Which member is that on a, on a point of order? Yes, that's on Reboy Matthew. Yeah, what is out of order? And yeah, your mic is, is on. Standing order. Honorable, honorable speaker, I want to stand on a point of order. Tell the honorable member that uh, the Climate Act, the Climate Change Act of 2016, under Section 7, sub Section 2, H, if you can make reference to that, it's very clear that this position was nominated on the grounds that first, marginalized under Article 260, and number two. Honorable, honorable, honorable Imate, are you on a point of information yes. or a point of order? The information. Number two. Oh, are you on a point of order or on a point of information? Information and order. But, uh, do, do you want to be informed, Honorable Mualio? And number I two. Don't, I, don't need it. I, do, I don't need to be informed, I know. Uh, so, so, regrettably, Honorable Imate, Honorable Mualio does not uh, want your information. Honorable Mualio will Thank you, proceed. thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, for protecting me. Uh, those lectures are not entertained by myself because I know what I am talking about. We have been able to approve so many people in this place, even in the committees of parliament. It is not those who are qualified are chosen to sit in those committees. And they, could, they contribute a lot after doing their own researches. So everybody should be given a chance to be able to serve this country equally with the others. So, uh, so I reject this, the, 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 this report of this committee that uh, it should go in the answer that I, I, I rejected the whole, the whole of this by because of uh, refusing to admit that this uh, Omar Honorable Harrison uh, Kombe then before Magarini Asante Mweshimewa Speaker kwa kunipatia nafasi nikaweze kuchangia uh, mswada huu Mheshimiwa Speaker mabadiliko ya anga ni mabadiliko ambayo yametutatiza kwa muda mrefu na hasa kwa maswala ya kilimo kwa ukosefu wa mvua tumetatizika sana lakini pamoja na hayo mheshimiwa speaker japo naunga mkono hoja hii ya kwamba tukaweze kuwapasisha hawa na tukaweze kumkataa umra uh, Omar tatizo langu kubwa mheshimiwa speaker tukiwa tunahitaji Watu walio na tajiriba, hii tajiriba wataitoa wapi? Pasipo kuwa kwa kazi, ndipo wakaweze kupata hiyo tajiriba, wakapate huo ujuzi. 
Naona tumemkataa ndio ama kamati imemkataa ndio lakini pamoja na hayo wakati mwingine ningeomba tuzingatie ya kwamba uh, wakati mwingi si rahisi kupata tajriba wakati ukiwa kwenye masomo ni sharti utoke uajiriwe ndipo ukaweze kupata tajriba ya hiyo kazi na haya mambo ya climate change mheshimiwa speaker ni mageni kwetu sote hakuna mtu ambaye yuko na ujuzi kupita mwingine juu ya masuala haya pamoja na hayo mheshimiwa speaker naomba kuunga mkono hoja hii ili tukaweze kuona uh, tunaendelea hatua nyingine na tukaweze uh, kuendelea mbele asante mheshimiwa speaker who is this member who is uh, walking out you're walking on rebojeo as a true nomad you know <laughs> You walk from this side to Honorable Ikaria, back to Honorable Arizon Kombe. You take one side. Uh, normally when you walk out. Uh, thank you. Uh, Honorable Kaindi Katana, the MP for Kaloleni, have you contributed to this? You want to contribute? Please do. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir, for giving this opportunity. First, I want to thank uh, the committee uh, for their report. However, I have reservation for rejection of one of the nominee on uh, the critics that she does not qualify. Mr. Speaker, we have approved so many people in this house, including cabinet secretaries who are not qualified for that job. So to me, though the committee has done a very good job, I feel they have discriminated against that woman. It cannot be on the basis of her not being qualified because she has... And then before Mbere North. Mr. Speaker, this is House of Recons. There is no time when this House ever approved cabinet ministers who are not qualified. The Honourable Member is not in order uh, to impute that this House approved cabinet secretaries who are not qualified, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Honourable Paul, you, can you withdraw? Honourable, Honourable Paul, you know, that is a matter that without evidence would be putting the House into discredit. So can you substantiate, if possible, confirming which cabinet secretary has ever been approved who did not merit the position? Honorable Paul uh, Kaindi. Honorable Paul Kaindi, you need information from no. Honorable Rueda. What, I'm, what I've said, and uh, I would wish my brother could have listened to what I was saying. You know, you cannot just jump saying that uh, I should withdraw something that I have not said. What I've said that we have approved so many cabinet sectors who are not expert on their ministries which they have been given yes. or they have been nominated. Yes. So there's nothing to withdraw. What I've said that this lady has been rejected because she does not have qualification on matters relating to environment. So, Mr. Speaker, sir, there's nothing to withdraw there. I think my colleague was just being, he just he wanted to just to, 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 to spend my time. So, on, on, the, on the report, I want to agree with the committee. Kaindi, do you want information from yes, Honorable yes, Rueda? Yes. Please proceed, Honorable Rueda. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I want to inform uh, Mwishimiwa that there is a CSS who have been rejected by committee and they were passed in this house. Rueda, you know your statement is also as general as that of Honorable Paul Kaindi. You, you, are, you are not uh, giving us specifics. Uh, and, and, and remember, I, I cautioned that avoid making statements which put the house into disrepute or discredit. You know, when you say CSS have been approved, 
who did not merit positions without having specifics, it puts the work of this house and its integrity into question, which you should avoid as a member. So unless you have specific information that you can stand by, that the best approach is to withdraw. And remember also you cannot discuss the, the matter of a CS and our standing orders unless there is a substantive motion, therefore. So, so I, I overrule you because uh, uh, your information does not satisfy the test of the standing order. Th th thank you, Mr. P proceed, Speaker. Honorable Paul Kaind. I want to agree with the committee because we are experiencing a lot of drought, uh, especially in my constituents, uh, Mr. Speaker. For the last three years, we have never had a good pattern of rainfall. So, this is the time we should take serious about climate change. Because if you destroy nature today, it will not forgive you in future. We had our own Wangari Mathai, who for the last over 30 years, she spoke about climate change. And nobody took her serious. But now we are seeing the dangers of destruction of our forest. And if we continue this way, then we as human beings will have no place to call home. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Honorable Rueda, because you did not provide specifics, uh, the statement you made that um, several CSS have been approved who did not uh, qualify is ordered expunged from the records of Parliament. Otherwise, proceed to make your contributions. Asante, Bwana Speaker, kunipatia mimi na fasi na mimi kuchangia. Uh, Bwana Speaker, uh, hapa ripoti mezungumzia kuhusu stakabadhi. Stakabadhi za umra zote zilikuwa sahihi, halali. Kwa sababu, Bwana Speaker, umra alipitishwa na IBC na ilikuwa simbali haijapita mwaka May mwezi wa 5 document zake zote stakabadhi zake zote alipita umra alikuwa amepigania governor Lamu IBC ni shirika la serikali itakuwaje IBC wampitishe hapa bunge waseme hawampitishi Uh, but I speak Kamuren, what is out of order? And, and do, don't interrupt your colleagues to debate or to have a second bite at the cherry <laughs> if you have debated. It, it would not be, a, thank, you know, fair. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Speaker. I'm not interrupting, Honorable Speaker. I wanted only to inform the member that he's misleading the House because he's bringing issues of IBC, which is not documented anywhere in that document. Please. Honorable Rueda. Who gave him the permission to inform me? I didn't want to be informed. And it was not a point of order. <coughs> Bwana Speaker. Bwana Speaker, umra anazo tajiriba ya umambo, ya mazingira, mambo ya... ya, ya Yeye ndio mambo yake kabisa hayo. Umra anaka, ana shirika linaitwa e, Safari Doctor. Safari Doctor ni shirika limekuwa lamu, limekusaidia sana paka wamepewa tuzo na UN kwa katika mambo haya. Mimi nashangaa leo nikiambiwa kwamba Umra hana tajriba. Umra alikuwa ndio mtu ambaye anaweza kuitetea kupata Fedha kwa dona zili atusaidie kwa mambo ya mazingira, mambo ya climate. It, iko kwa, kwa rekodi ikioneshwa umra, ameshindana na nchi zingine, akashinda kama mkenya, amepewa tuzo ya UN kwa mambo hayo. Inasikitisha wana speaker, just be, kwa sababu ni mbajuni, hizi shida amba utazipata sisi ni nyingi wana speaker. speaker. Haya ni mambo ya nafanywa ni kama halikuwa hawataki kumpatia hii nafasi. Na so kwamba amekuja mwenye pengine na matatizo yake 
mtu amejieleza kama watu wanasema hapa wabunge wanasema alikuwa hataki alikuwa hataki alikuja vipi kwenye kama, kwenye komitii kama alikuwa hataki komitii imemwambia siku ya e, tuletee hizi takabadhi ufanye ziwe za kamati ambazo hatutaki ze zile ulipeleka kwa IBC amerudi tena akahakikisha zimeletwa ziko bunge kuhakikisha kwamba nimeleta kwa maana alikuwa hataki angefanya vipi hivyo kabla saa sita umra alikuwa ameshaleta hizo document zote bwana speaker haya ni mambo yanafanyika na acha wa Kenya wajue kwamba sisi wabajuni walamu tunagandamizwa hivi hivi juzi tu wamefanya wamefanya iye mambo ya rangers sisi watu alamu east tumepewa rangers watano na watu wamepewa arobaini ni hayo hayo mambo yanatumika kugandamiza mbajuni kwani sisi hatuna haki huyu umra mmoja tumepitisha watu wangapi hapa umra mmoja mbajuni mmoja ndio mmeona lazima mumgandamize si haki si haki bwana speaker kamati haiko sawa na si haifai na mnavyofanya nionesheni document moja ambayo ya umra haiko sawa ESC alikwenda ESC alikwenda mwanzo alipoenda akaambiwa hizi ndio zinafaa peleka hizi hizi ndio akatoa mfano umeenda kuomba passport passport umesema mimi utambiwa andike reason ukiandika sababu kwamba mimi naenda Tanzania na ile Tanzania pengine umeenda kisha ukaitwa tena ukaambiwa nenda nenda kweli kwingine ukisio utatumia passport ile ile si kama umepita kwa, kwa IBC kwa nini haiwezi ipita kwa bunge na mwaka haujaisha document zetu sote sisi tulipitia kama candidate lo tupigania viti bado hazija expire ni, ni mambo wana sababu zao hawamtaki tu umra na anawaambia mnafanya makosa uliza angalia shirika la e, safari doctor uliza history ya umra umra ndio expert kwa mambo hayo basi mwambiwe umra amevuta pesa nyingi kwa serikali za nje kuleta huku Kenya paka amepewa tuzo ya UN itakuwaje apewe tuzo ya UN kisha hapa sisi tunamkataa hizo ni dhulma mnafanyia wabajuni na haifai na sisi sawa sisi pia ni wa Kenya tulipa taxi mtu mmoja katika hao wote appointment appointees sisi mmoja wa kibajuni ndio nyinyi hamtaki imeingia jichoni it is not fair honorable waida your, your time is up uh, i now call the mover to reply uh, don't worry honorable mishi parliament has a way of running its affairs Thank you honorable speaker. Uh, Order Mikubalie, honorable Mishi, could you could you listen to the mover before nimpe dada yangu hata sitampa minute moja nitampa minutes mbili. Ah uh, meitisha moja nampa mbili aweze kuchangia alafu ndio tuweze. Karibu. Honorable Mishi under the standing orders when it reaches the time for the mover to reply it has to revert back to the mover and it is only the mover who can and then the mover had confirmed you would uh, donate time to you. Uh, so, so proceed. Asante mwishimiwa speaker. Mwishimiwa speaker ili ni baraza muhimu sana ambalo linatakana tulitengeze kama wa Kenya kwa sababu tukiangalia mabadiliko ya hali ya anga na tukiangalia mambo ya kiangazi tulionayo. Na hivyo basi mimi ningesema ingekuwa mwafaka kama ripoti hii ingekuja bila dosari. Na nikisema ripoti hii na dosari ni kwa sababu hivi sasa kama taifa tunataka kuangalia jamii ambazo zimetengwa ili pia tuweze kuzileta katika taasisi za kiserikali. Na tukiangalia jamii ya wabajuni ni katika zile jamii zilizotengwa ama zile tunasema minority ama zile Kiingereza tunasema marginalize. Na mimi namfahamu umra kabisa na nimejua umra akiwa mwanamke akitetea harakati za mazingira na mambo ya mabadiliko ya hali ya anga na pia ameweza kuwa katika shirika linaloitwa Safari Doctor nimemjua hata amekuwa aliyekeza sana na vijana na kina mama katika kujenga mikoko katika sehemu za pwani haswa lamu kwa hivyo mimi nataka nimwambie chairman ama chair wa kamati hii aweze kurudia tena mambo haya ripoti na tuweze kumregesha umra kwa sababu pia kama mama lazima tusimame na kina mama ambao ni wachache katika zile nyadhifa za kufanya maamuzi kwa hivyo lazima tuangalie tujenge ukenya na tujenge pia zile jamii ambazo zimetengwa na pia tuweze kuendeleza kina mama ukiangalia wamekuwa watu wanne pale tuna Emily na tuna wale wengine lakini je tukiwa na wamama wawili na kina baba wawili basi tutakuwa yale tunawazungumzia ya thuluthi mbili tunaweza kuyafikia tukiwa tutaendelea kwa njia kama hivyo 
lakini nataka niseme ripoti dosari lake ni hilo tu chama na kiondoa dosari hiyo na unga mkono kwa sababu ni baraza muhimu sana kuangalia hali zetu hali za anga kwa sababu sasa kuna kiangazi chakula tumekosa Asante sana Muba Thank you honorable speaker and I want to thank first of all uh, my committee members and uh, as somebody has just said this is what other committees should be doing to be able to come on the floor of the house to support a report that they have appended their signatures and I want to thank my committee out of 15 I think we have spoken around 11 and that is a mood that we should always so that it is not seen as if it is a chairman's report it is a report that is uh, uh, actually uh, supported by, in, in fact, even in our committee honorable chair, one of the members did raise the very same issues that uh, my dear, uh, the women rep for Lam, uh, the member of parliament of Lamu East, and uh, my dear sister, Meshi Kombo, uh, on what they are raising. And it is true. And we looked at it. Honorable speaker, sometimes as a committee, we only write what the law requires us to write. There are those other things that uh, the law does not require, so we kept them off from what we were. Honorable Rueda, I hope you are listening to the chair of the committee on that part, because you are very emotional. Chair, you know, Honorable... Yes, you, I, and I, I totally... Yeah. I, I, feel I know, Chair, you know, Honorable Rueda yes, is, yes. The only, is the only Bajuni in, in Parliament, and so you, you easily understand our emotions. But Honorable Rueda, listen to the chair now. I, I, I want to thank uh, Honorable Roida Loida from e Lamu East. And, and you know, last, and, and I appreciate, and she's a very strong lady. You know, Honorable, last she came as a women rep, and she went to a single constituency and won. And, uh, and, and we appreciate on uh, the work that she has done. I know from the last parliament, she was uh, really advocating for matters and issues and resources for Lamu, not even as a as a Lamu East, but also for the whole county. And I want to appreciate uh, my dear uh, sister for the good work that you're doing. But also, we also want, this is a house of parliament, is a house of record. Whenever we sit, we sit and write records as per the law. And that is what we followed. And, and uh, the aspect of IBC, maybe uh, Madam Loida, you didn't understand it very clearly. When you are invited as a nominee for a certain position, there, today, the speaker did allude to the fact that there are three nominees. And there is a questionnaire that you're supposed to write and bring before the committee. Then on that basis, is on that basis of that questionnaire, that questions are asked based on a questionnaire that was you're supposed to avail to a committee. But uh, Honorable Ryder, I want to tell you that uh, Madam Omar, when she came, she provided a... a uh, a, a questionnaire that she had presented to IBC as now the document to be presented before a committee. And we were very lenient. And we told her, maybe you have forgotten to attach the right. And, and she said, no. Uh, does it mean when you're given a passport to go to Uganda, you can't use the same passport to go to Tanzania? So we asked, uh, w then what do you mean? That she brought what she presented to IBC in May. 2022. And the question is, had the president nominated you in May 2022? No, you had not been appointed. So these are some of the silent issues that we kept quiet over and above now. And we understand she's, uh, she has her papers, but are these papers re uh, related to, uh, to, to, to this? And, and also at the same time, honorable uh, speaker, is, you know, the the way you also prepare, and I agree with Honorable Alaj, when you prepare to come to, assuming I'm invited as David Gikaria, I come in a t-shirt and uh, shorts. How will the committee carry you when you present yourself like that? Then that, those are some of the issues that uh, also on matters of presentation. So, but those are not within the law, uh, but, but Honorable Speaker, just aside, that aside because it was, it was when you ask a question and you say, what sort of a question is that? And you are asked by a member of parliament in a committee. And the, other, the next question you are asked, you tell the other member, 
thank you for asking me a, a reasonable question. How do you carry a committee of parliament in that line? So again, and, and I tried. I actually tried with my committee members to try and uh, we call it bring her back on the, but uh, it was unfortunate. But we are saying a Bajuni ought to be given an opportunity. And this position remains for the marginalized. And we, have, we will, as somebody has requested the president, please bring a name of another lady from the marginalized community so that they can be checked and we can be able to. And, and people, and I totally agree with you, Alaji, people again should not be just be given uh, things on a silver platter because they are women, because they are marginalized. I think it is important also for you to prepare when you're going for an interview. Mubai, your time is up. Uh, why so, not? Uh, okay, lastly, uh, Honorable uh, Chair, is I want to admit that I have had the issues that have been raised, and particularly on the marginalized, and that one we, we are hoping that the President will bring in an, uh, uh, another marginalized lady for the same position that can be considered, but I want to say Honorable Chair, I want to thank each and every person who has given us their contribution. And uh, other, of course, even the ones who have not supported us, we have had you and maybe the other committee members. But it's also important for you to visit some of these committees. And you can make a judgment for yourself when you're making that decision. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Chair, for good reasons. Yeah, th thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Mm, for good reasons, I'm not going to put the question. The question on the motion will be put when Parliament next sits, uh, possibly tomorrow or at such time as the House Business Committee will schedule. Could we go to the next order? Next order. Okay, order. Honorable members, for, for the convenience of the House, the meeting or the sitting will be adjourned to tomorrow. The time being uh, uh, 7 p.m., this House stands adjourned until Thursday, the 16th day of March at 2.30 p.m. Thank <laughs> you.